All right, looks like we're live. <laughs> Hello, if anybody's here. Um, we're just hanging out tonight, casual, chatting, reading. Yes. Very chill sprints as befits the readathon. <laughs> like yes, yes, and plus it's just like you know it's beginning of the year. We gotta ease into all this stuff, right? That's right. That's right. How has the the start of the readathon been for you? All this stuff, right? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Right. I'm trying. Ah! I was opening it in another window, but yeah, it did. Oh yeah, it did not mute. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, sorry. What was the question? <laughs> oh, just like how the start of the readathon, like how your reading has been going. Um, it has been a slow start because I, our best friend that comes like every new year's and she usually leaves, um, like around like the second, but this time she stayed and worked here all week. So she didn't leave till Friday. Mm -hmm. And so like with her here, you know, every evening we're playing games, we're hanging out, so it's been a bit slow. I, on my first short novel, I'm almost done. I mean, the Penelope ad. And so that all finished tonight because I only have like 20 pages left. And then I was reading as my audio book, this um, short story collection, but only I've gotten how much that? A hundred pages in. So that's it. That's like all I've mm -hmm. read. Because usually I listen to like it while I'm walking to and fro, taking my daughter to school. But sometimes she would come with me on the walk. And so I wasn't able to listen. So. Yeah. 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 So slow start. But so far, I'm liking both of those. So, I mean, that's the good part, right? Right. Quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? Have you gotten some stuff? Red and stuff? Yes, I have read a few things already um so the first thing I read like I it's funny because I did not like set out for this to be the first book I read in the year but it ended up feeling like a really good one to start with was the poetry collection um mm -hmm. by Edna St. Vincent Millay it was really really good like it's the one called Renaissance and other poems and um yeah I really loved that and then the other thing that I've finished already is one of the novellas in the teacup magic series, which I've been really enjoying. So like, I also have like, just been really liking the things I pick up. So it's been a good start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, that was one thing I wanted to talk about tonight was that I just, cause I don't usually do like a stat video that I just wanted to like chat about it, that I looked at my reading last year compared to the year before and the stats. And I just found some interesting things going on um did you see my book call where i talked about doesn't matter how many books i buy i read the same percentage of books yes i do yes i saw that. so that's <laughs> which like, is hilarious to me <laughs> yeah so that was one weird or fun interesting statistics that i'm like okay i'm consistent i just read like 20 to 25 percent of my books that i buy doesn't matter how many yeah yeah and, and then the other stat that I found out last year, because my reading was super low last year compared to the previous like years I've been on Goodreads, like I didn't even reach 100 books. And I had been, I think the year before I read 214. So you had a lot going on last year. Though. <laughs> well, 2023 was really low, but then I, I split up my star ratings and it turned out that I had a much quality, higher mm. quality year, even though I read like, more than half less books yeah the percentage because like when i looked at my percentages that i had about the same percentage of five star but i had like 61 percent four star as opposed to 46 the year before and then like when you added up all the like three two and one stars this in 2023 i only had um where's that 14 19 19% of my books were three stars or below. And then, okay. which is great. Yeah. And then in 2022, I had 31% of mine were three stars or below. So yeah, so that's like a fifth versus a third, basically. Yeah. So that I thought that was really interesting, too, that even though I wasn't reading as much, I think I was 
either DNFing more or like really being selective since I'm only going to read four books this month. I'm being selective about what I read. And I think that yeah. was, so I kind of want to, I'm not saying I want to like also only read 90 some books this year, but that yeah. I would like to take that into like reading quality books, like books that I'm really excited about. And I don't know if it's because I just didn't really participate in a lot of like challenges or things like that, that I was just like, I'm just going to read what I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> and just letting myself read whatever I want. Or not feeling like I have to do anything. Yeah. Like, because you knew that you had less, like, resources and time to devote mm -hmm. to reading, you were like, well, I'm going to make sure it's, like, not something that I mm -hmm. set myself, you know? Yeah. So I think that was really interesting. Yeah. My, my two interesting stats for this year. <laughs> That's, yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Um, when I was, like starting to put together like my favorites list because I really do like breaking it up by genre I just think that works mm -hmm. for me especially because I ha I tend to have a lot of books I want to talk about but it was interesting because I didn't feel like I didn't feel like I have like quite as many favorites to talk about but during the year it didn't feel like that you know like mm -hmm. it didn't feel like I was missing out on like books that I really loved so I wonder I guess because like I did read a little less in 2023 than I did the year before. Not by much at all, but I wonder if even that was just like, it, it felt like a difference, you know, even though I'm sure yeah. that if I counted them up, it doesn't, it's not actually that many. But like one of the things I noticed is like, oh, I don't need to do separate like fantasy and historical fantasy. Like I can just do it all in one list because I didn't have as many favorites, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> And I also wonder if it's too, I find sometimes, especially with things that are four stars, I'll feel like, oh, I'm having a really great reading time, but mm -hmm. they're not say the most memorable books, but I'm enjoying them in the moment. But when you get to the end of the year, it's not like all those four stars are like super memorable. Yeah. They stick with you. But when you're going along, you're like, I'm having a great reading time. I'm enjoying it. Right. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking really quick just glancing at 2023 versus 2022. And I definitely think I had fewer mediocre books last mm -hmm. year. Um, so kind of like what you were saying where like, I think the quality was on average higher, even if I had fewer like top favorites. I think I also like, I, I read a lot less three star books, which I'm pretty happy with. Yeah. Um, one and two stars seems about the same, but yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And if I take away like the percentages and just look like, cause I read so few, I only had 13, three stars, which is yeah. really good. And only four, two stars. And I didn't have any one stars. Cause I was like, I, I think I was DNFing anything that I would have given one star to. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel like that was a good year. So let 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 us bring to, into the this current year, like right. carry that year. reading feeling. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Natalie. Oh, hi. <laughs> we have one person. Yay! I mean, I think there's a few more watching. So. Yeah. Just. <sighs> Just talking about vague reading stats. <laughs> My favorite kind. Yes. It's like, I always like the idea of having like data and information, but I know myself and I know that I would not stick to collecting it. Like mm -hmm. it would just make like finishing a book a chore for me when I don't want it to be. Um, that's my reasoning anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I don't really do stats videos because I don't find them like, I, I find it interesting to discuss it here. I might, I guess maybe I could see doing it in the future as like a live or our chat, yeah. like our pre-recorded chat or whatever, because I like better discussing it than just like sitting here and I'm going to like recite to everyone. Yeah. How many I actually, I liked, and I, I don't think I did this as like a, like an end of year video, although maybe I should think about that. But like I did one before that was like things I've learned about my reading taste. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like that, like rather than like being like a number 
breakdown, it was like, oh, I actually tend to like this genre a lot more than I think I do, you mm -hmm. know? So that could also be like a fun way to do it in a video if you want, yeah. like more about, like you say, kind of discussing it rather than like mathematical. <laughs> yeah, then listing out these numbers. Because by, and the, I also think you need a graphic because when I watch people's yeah. stuff, if they don't have it written on a graphic, I'm like, you're just saying numbers and none of that <laughs> is sticking into me. I need a graphic. I need a pie chart. I need yeah. something to make it more interactive. So what is, I'm working on editing an article. Yep. Yep. All that works. That makes me so happy. <laughs> Do I know what that is? Maybe I need to look that up. It's it's so good. It's um, I guess you'd call it like a cross between a picture book and a poetry collection, but it doesn't just like like it doesn't read like poetry that only kids would enjoy. I loved it, so I'm excited you're reading it, Natalie. I hope you enjoy. Okay, well I have to look it up now. Legacy. I've heard of Nikki Rhymes. Is yeah, or somebody else. It's cool. It's cool because. So, like, I heard about Nikki Grimes from um, Pretty Brown Eye Reader. She talks about her poetry a lot. She always does a lot of poetry content for National Poetry Month, which is very cool. And she really likes Nikki Grimes. And so that's how I, I learned about her. And I don't remember if all of her collections are like this, but in Legacy, she takes um, poet, or poems by different, like, Harlem Renaissance poets, some mm -hmm. of whom are, like, really under known or underappreciated and so she includes that poem but then she also takes like the last word of every line and uses that to make her own poem it's just like so smart oh okay i think i've heard of the book between the lines by her heard somebody review that book i'm just looking at what else she wrote she's written a lot like a lot of children's books yeah yeah she's very prolific so i have lots more to check out I'll have to maybe get some of our children's books to read with the kids too. Cause it looks like a lot of different topics. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really loved it when I read it. Like, Oh yeah. That does sound like a great book. I, I would like to read that. And it's, it's cool because like, I feel like it's a kind of poetry that could work for a lot of different people because it doesn't, it's not like dense, like old classic poetry can be but it also doesn't read like completely contemporary and modern I just think she did a really good job of like choosing the poems to include and then I loved her versions as well it's just very cool yeah yeah she was she's very prolific no wonder I've heard of the name yeah I see she's been in some collections and in one I read which was called the talk conversations about race love and truth I read that one is that is that the graphic one you talked about? It's like a graphic. Non it has some one? graphic. It's like a mixed okay. media type thing. Okay. Yeah, I remember you talking about that one. That one sounded super interesting as well. I read that as part of one of my January short reads. I don't remember mm -hmm. if I read it last year or if I read it the year before. Let me see. Two years ago. So two Januarys ago, I read it. So the the prequel to short stack readathon where we just sort of unofficially were like we're reading short stuff this is great <laughs> i'm not sharing with anybody but i'm doing it but uh, yeah, yeah i do think it's like a great thing to do and i know um rebecca no i can't remember what her channel is called but she was participating and so there might be some other people participating in the readathon reading short things and yeah i had i know i had like multiple people on my announcement they were like this is such a good idea like this is such a good way to start the year i'm definitely gonna do it so yeah i definitely think there's a lot of people interested in it yeah i definitely want to uh once i um finish this novel i think i'm gonna read some shorter things to kind of get some things Mm -hmm. going before because I do have well I want to spread it out I've got this poetry collection and I think I'll spread that out mm -hmm. and read it over the week because I want to be able to like really think about the poems so I got it out for tonight because I thought I would like each sprint like start with a couple poems then yeah. do something else did you spread out your poetry or did you just do that I, one together I did kind of because like 
it was so short. Like, I think it probably would be considered a chat book because I think it was only 40 pages or something. So even though I read it in a day or two, I was actually very careful to like mm -hmm. read one or two and then do something else because I've noticed that about myself is that because I can read poetry quickly, mm -hmm. I kind of do that automatically or like I assume that I should. And it's like, actually, no, I get more out of it when I space it out a little bit more. Um, so I did actually space it out, even though it, because it was such a short collection, it didn't really feel yeah. like I did. But yeah. Okay. Oh, I want to show you. So I, I like to mark the short story collection to see which ones are my favorites. And mm -hmm. I use that. They can get yeah. Except for the, the little stickies at their heads. And so, oh, that's weird. <laughs> so they're upside down. Yeah. But I was like, well, that's where the sticky is. I can't. Yeah. Okay. I still got little cute cats. Just hold the book upside down. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, because otherwise you'd have to you'd have to put the stickies on the bottom, which kind of doesn't make sense. Like yeah, so when you put it on the bookshelf, yeah. If they're too long, they would bang. I mean, I guess I could put the like if I put them at the bottom, I could put the book in the cover upside down if I needed. Yeah. <laughs> but that would seem weird. So yeah, they're just upside down cats. There I thought go. that was weird, though, that they wouldn't have put the sticky at the big end. Yeah, like, I wouldn't have even, I guess because, like, because you're looking at the sticky, like, normal way, and, of course, the cat is, like, sitting up. So they're like, oh, well, the top of a sticky is usually where you have, like, the, the sticky part. So maybe that's what they were thinking. But, like, it's weird that, like, nobody tested it, and they are like, hmm, <laughs> if you mean? use these for actually marking in books, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, and also just a sticky, you, like, since it's shaped, the head is the skinniest part. So you would think they would want it on the biggest part. Because yeah. even if you had it, because, you know, even if you had it going the right way to use it's just like a sticky on something, it's not like it's going to flop down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have some questions about their, their mm -hmm. methodology. Their style choice. I don't know. Something yeah. is happening, but they're still usable. I'm still using them to mark my book. And I was planning on writing because they're pretty big I was planning on writing notes but I have not done that yet and I've already marked three stories so I probably should do that soon if I'm going to remember what I was going to write yeah. on there. I always like I always think to myself when I'm reading not necessarily short story collections because I feel like I can remember those longer but if I'm reading a poetry collection every time I finish one that mm -hmm. I enjoyed I'm like I should have marked my favorite poems, yeah. but do I ever do that? No. Do I ever remember that the next time I start one? No. <laughs> yep. I mean, I did this. I haven't done it with the poetry, but I did this with the um, the last short story collection I read, which was Exhalation by Ted Chiang. I did put a sticky on every single one and wrote notes and gave it a star rating. So I would remember mm -hmm. at the end. And this time, since there, this one has like 30 short stories in it. I'm like, I'm not going to rate every single one. So I was like, I'm just going to put a sticky on the ones that I would like read again. Yeah. And so that way, if I ever pick this book up again, I know just read the ones with the sticky on <laughs> and don't waste your time. And not that they were like bad, but like some of them, you know how sometimes you read a short story and you're like, okay, yeah, that's over. Yeah. <laughs> and you're well, like, that, that was fine. <laughs> yeah. Nothing necessarily horrible about it, but not something I would want to like return to or find exciting. Yeah. Like maybe the person was just experimenting with a prompt or something and yeah, and not their most exciting work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or there's just a lot. None of these authors are ones I've ever heard of. So maybe they're more newer authors that are just kind of experiencing their first like things published or whatever. Yeah, that would be cool as well. And some of them I'm really enjoying. So now I'm like, oh, do I get to go find some of the people and see if they've published anything else or? Yeah. Yeah. So that is the exciting thing. But Is that the one that you're going to be reading during sprints? Um. Well, I've been listening to that one because it has, since it's like, I don't, I, I don't know from the authors in the back. I don't know if they're, if most of them are from Africa or just some are, some are from Africa and some are African American from what I can mm -hmm. tell. Um, but there's a lot of like African words and names. So I've been listening to it so that 
I can like get the pronunciation. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to write it down because I don't know if I want to listen to an audio book tonight. Maybe. Because I did bring my knitting. Nice. Though I don't know yet if I can listen and knit at the same time since I'm still. <laughs> right. Like I, I'm trying to remember how long it took me before I was like confident enough that I could do other stuff while knitting. And it was a, it was a while. So. Yeah. Cause I'm at this point do not know how to do any troubleshooting. So if I were to like drop a stitch, I'd be like, and we're starting over. I'm panicked. Yeah. Like I don't know what I'm doing. So yeah. I think yeah. I still need to focus on that. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to do audio, but I'm probably going to finish. So the first, if we're going to do our first sprint soon, I'm probably going to finish this. Right. So yeah. I want to, I want to finish mine during our sprints tonight as well. Which one are you reading? Is this I one am reading, one? yeah, Married by Scandal by Tasonia Odette. This was for, see, I was talking to you about this. I'm like, this is perfectly timed because I have a couple of like video project ideas that I've theoretically been working on um, that have short books. And so mm. I just need to like finish them. And this is one of them. Cause I'm reading, it's one of those series where like every book is by a different indie author. Yeah. And there were a few that I was already interested in but I kind of got curious and I'm like, well, what if I just like read the whole series and see if some of the ones I wouldn't have picked up are ones that I really enjoy. So that's kind of the idea. Um, and actually so far I'm really liking this one, which I'm glad because uh, spoilers for the vlog, but the first two I read did not go great. Oh no. <laughs> um, but I'm liking this one. There's also like a fashion, like the, um, one of the main characters or the main character, she's like a fashion designer. And so that's why she ends up doing this sort of publicity engagement tour sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really like that. And also there's like a surprising amount. I don't know why it was surprising, I guess, because I've never read anything by this author. So I didn't know, but there's like a surprising amount of like emphasis on healing from past trauma from like the other relationship that she was in that like, I don't know, it's really interesting. So I'm liking it a lot. I think I've got about a hundred pages left. So if I finish that during sprints, then I will allow myself to play my visual novel later. <laughs> yeah. I um, I don't think I've ever read a series like that that was written by different people. Yeah. Um, there's been a couple that I'm sort of like in the middle of that I've been really enjoying. And it's cool because it's a good way to sort of like sample mm -hmm. a lot of authors who tend to write sort of similar subgenres, but yeah. obviously like with different, different kinds of stories. So yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm enjoying the experiment so far, even though the first two were kind of like, yeah, not great. Um, yeah, what? yeah. Oh, great! You're participating. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's. I mean, not cool that it was a one and a half star. Yeah. But at least it was short. I mean, that's one <laughs> good thing about this. If it's bad, you're not investing. 700 pages in it <laughs> yeah yeah I think about that a lot sometimes it's like sometimes I read a book that's like on the longer side and I hate it and I'm like I know for a fact that I would not be this like pissed off about it if it weren't long but mm -hmm. it's like you make me sit through all these things that are bad or that I don't like for like 700 pages like yeah. excuse me yeah, like, how dare you? Who's yeah. that many pages in my how life? How dare you waste my time in this way, sir? <laughs> it's 100 pages. I'm like, okay, I can just push through. I'll finish it. Like, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh, well. So, let, why don't we? I don't even know what time. Yeah, we've been chatting almost a half hour. So, let's sprint. Um, do, do you it. have a preference on time? Um, up to you. We could do. If we go just to the hour, that's like 35 minutes. That feels like it could be a good length. Okay. I don't I know. What's that you... Banners is what I have to push, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I always do that instead of like the cute timers, just because I feel like banners are easier. But Okay. Reading sprint until, oh, oh, right. Is that where we are? Oh, yeah. Can't write the right thing. Okay. All right. Yeah, I did it. Sorry, I'm still fairly new at this, figuring out. Um, oh, and they said they were also currently reading The Order of Time. Oh, well, hopefully that one goes better. Yeah. Than, 
the other other two. That's a really interesting topic as well. Not something I associate with like a short book. So that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> you would think time would take a longer time to write. Maybe it started off as like an essay or something. Mm. Maybe. Okay. So we're ready to go and mute. Yes. All right. See you soon.
Hello. <laughs> Hello. Let's see if I hide that. Live show pro over here. Yes, I'm figuring it all out. <laughs> yeah, well, I finished a book, my first one of the month. <laughs> and it was good. You read this, right? I'm pretty sure. I did, yeah. I I really enjoyed it. Um, I can definitely see, like, a, a couple friends of mine have read it, like, over the last couple of years. And I can definitely see, like, the criticism with Margaret Atwood not going far enough with, like, the feminism aspect. Mm -hmm. But I did like it. Yeah. I mean, I really liked it. I never read anything by Margaret Atwood before. And I didn't really want to jump right in with Handmaid's... Um, what is that? Handmaid's yeah. Handmaid's <laughs> uh, it's like, that seems intense. So yeah. we'll start here. And I, like, laughed in the first chapter. And I was like, I did not expect it to have, like, humor. I mean, it's, like, dark humor. Yeah. But I, didn't, I did not expect that. And I really enjoyed the way she kind of used that to tell like some like harder aspects of them. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, the 12 hanged maids thing, I just can't get over that. That's like a, by the way, <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised, but like, and I, I haven't even read like uh, a translation of like the full Odyssey mm -hmm. or anything, but I've like read bits and pieces and other stuff. And um, yeah, when I read the Penelope ad, I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. But when I read that a few years ago, I was like, oh my God, I completely forgot that that even happened. Like, yeah. cause nobody cares. <laughs> like they, no big thing. Yeah. Well, and I didn't know that because I've never read the official like Odyssey. I have only read the children's versions. Mm -hmm. Like I read with my daughter, a children's version. Of course they did not include yeah in the children's version which yes. makes sense that you wouldn't like include the like murder of 12 young women because they had sex with the suitors <laughs> like yeah they wouldn't have put that in the children's version but um yeah because it's like they the, the version i did also just focus more on like the hero stuff and not on like some of the other stuff that Odysseus did because obviously it was yeah. for kids and I knew some of the other stuff that was going on but I did not know about that one until I started reading this and I was like I need to go look up who the 12 maids were <laughs> like yeah yeah sure. so yeah I thought it was really good and I liked that it was short and like because I think that when you do a retelling like that where you're doing it from like the woman's perspective of the myth but there's not a lot of background sometimes yeah. it can get too long and you're like well you're just i'm gonna get you're just making up stuff like everybody does with the story but this is like you know she's using sources to yeah. comment on like the like injustices of certain parts of it so yeah i liked it yeah, yeah. well keep working at it <laughs> yeah. hopefully it gets over soon yes Yeah. So I hope that the order of time worked out better than those. Yes. Others. Yeah. Hopefully, no one stars, no more one stars or one point five stars for the read, <laughs> or just yeah. in general. Um, I think. I mean, especially, I've had this happen to me a few times where either like my last book of the year or my first book of the next year is one that I really, really don't like. <laughs> So hopefully you've got that out of the way. Yeah. I can't remember what it, I don't know. The last book I read in December, I think was a five star. Ooh, and nice. this one was a four star. So there have actually been a couple times at least where I made a conscious decision of like, I am hating this book, but I'm not going to DNF it at this point, And I'm going to push myself to finish it. So I don't carry it into the next year. Yeah. So sometimes I do that, but. Oh, that's so tough. Is it like not easy because it's dense like language or is it not easy because of the subject matter? I'm wondering. Seems like maybe more, if it's short, maybe more just like dense academic language, maybe. 
Right. Or just like a hard concept to explain. Cause like when you were, when you commented originally about like what the subject was, I was like, yeah, time is one of those things. Like it's such a basic part of how like human society works. It's like, I could not explain it to somebody. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Or try telling a kid. Okay. So like my daughter, like we'll be in a car and she'll be like, how long until we get there? And it's like, you know, 45 minutes. And she's like, what's 45 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> Um, well, it's like 45 minute increments. And she's like, well, how much is a minute increment? It's like, well, 60 seconds. She's like, well, how much is this? <laughs> and like, she has no concept. She's sick. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, got remember to, yeah, I got, when, we got to where we would describe it as like, oh, it's two Grinches. And that's oh my we, gosh. Okay. That's what I was going to just say is like when me and my family, like when we were really little, like, and we'd be on like road trips or like drive, driving long distances. That is exactly how they would, they'd say like, we're going to be there in three Blue's Clues episodes. <laughs> like, because that was like a unit of time that we could kind of understand. So like, yeah, we have <laughs> Grinch, which is like 25 minutes and we have um, um, Bluey, which is like 10 minute episodes. So those yeah, are the yeah. things that my kids understand. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's either more of a bluey or a grinch or we start adding them up and that's like all we got so yeah the subject matter that makes sense i have sometimes hard time wrapping my mind around those like things that i'm like oh it's just how it is i'm not i don't need to know how it works right. <laughs> yeah it's like i experienced this and i cannot tell you anything about it yeah thank you scientists for doing it so the rest of us don't have to Oh, Krista's here. Hello. Hello. Oh, so you're from your, for Once Upon a Book Club Advent Books. Great. I know. I actually was reading a book that was like an Advent book, and I am not even halfway through it. So obviously, I did not read it every day for Advent. <laughs> I was like, I just can't do something that I have to do every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have trouble. That's why I've never done. I know some people do like Advent book things where they're like, oh, I'll read one short story a day or mm -hmm. some people I've seen have actually read like a book a day. And I'm like, how do you do that at the, especially at the holidays? I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah. I, one of the books that I was like thinking of trying to get done for short stack is a sort of like devotional type book that I'm having mixed feelings about so far, but it is like, like, okay, I started it. I had already read three days of it before. So I was already ahead. And yet somehow I'm like, I think I'm like two days behind already. <laughs> like, I'm just not good at remembering that. No. Um, I can't believe sixth grade, your teacher threw that at you. It's a fine time. Tell me all about time. Just like ask a bunch of 11 year olds. Like, <laughs> I know, I you know, to me, I forget how young six, sixth grade is. Because it's like, oh, that's in middle school. But we have a friend in the area that has a sixth grader. And when I look at her, I'm still like, you were still like so young. <laughs> you're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you're in middle school, you are still so young. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I did start. So after I finished that, I did read the first 12 pages, which I don't know if it's, you know how sometimes it start on one. Mm -hmm. so I guess I only read 10 pages of this poetry collection i'm going to try to do it in 10 page increments is what i'm just mm -hmm. like because like I, I need to read i need to pick up some of clint smith's poetry because like i loved his nonfiction as well so i yeah, need to you, read more stuff you might want to pick up his other one what's his other one called counting descent because this one i am noticing i had read a few at like a poetry night um mm -hmm just kind of flipped through and found some I wanted to read. And then just reading the first 10, this is definitely like very focused on parenthood. Like going okay. from his wife being pregnant to what it's like to have a baby toddler and all that. So not that you can't appreciate that as like, no, but yeah, that is a very personal like experience or aspect of it. That's good to know. I'll look so into his try, other one. try his other one first. Cause I think his other one is just kind of more general. Mm -hmm. poems but this one definitely has a theme you can like see like each one is connecting to each other of like not necessarily like, connected but like it is following from when they first found out they're pregnant to like through moments of that yeah 
which I found interesting. Like I actually have the um, poet because it's like this poetry night where we basically hang out at my brother and sister in laws and they have poetry books or you can bring your own poems and that everybody just reads poems. And I, I don't always share because I can't like just pick up the poetry they have because I'm like, well, what if I don't like that poetry? Yeah. <laughs> Different kind of styles. So I was like, I know I like Clint Smith's writing. I'll bring this one. I hadn't read it ahead of time, but like, I'll just read like a couple and I'll see which ones do I want to speak out loud. And, and there were like two that were revolving around like toddler time when I was like, or baby time. I was like, this is speaking to me from when <laughs> I, when I was in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So he's definitely a good writer. Did you, end, did you end up reading again, how the world was passed to participate in Bethany's talk or did you just no, remember? I, yeah. Like, cause I think it was right around, I don't even remember what, about when things happened last year anymore. It's like, we're barely in 2024. And I'm like, what happened last year? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I did not reread it. Cause I think it was close enough to the time that I felt like I didn't need to. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually like, so speaking of like nonfiction, one of the ones that I read, like, at the end of December, for whatever reason, I was just like, I want to read like all the nonfiction. I don't know why. Uh, that was just kind of what I was in the mood for. And one of the ones that I did was Rachel Maddow's new book, um, Prequel, hmm. which is about how like big of a problem, like pro Nazi and pro Hitler sentiment was in the U S like before and during world war two. And like, how like the ordinary people who like stopped it and who brought it down super interesting and also i feel like as we're heading into the election season it's like encouraging to like read something where it's like yes it's bad but like we beat it before um but anyway that one i would definitely recommend if anyone is like looking for a really gripping nonfiction. Mm -hmm. like some of the things that like just like random people were like brave enough to do is like incredible. Um, also the audio is fantastic because she reads it herself. So kind of off topic, but if anybody's like looking for a nonfiction, I thought it was fantastic. Let me add it to my list. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. I am trying to read some nonfiction on my shelf, but I would, but that one. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. Well, and like, I, I obviously like know about, Rachel Maddow like I know who she is but I had never like picked up one of her books before and then I saw her being interviewed on I think it was maybe Stephen Colbert's short show but I'm not sure and I just like really liked the way she was talking about the book and I'm like I think I need this specific combination of like reality and encouragement <laughs> right now so um yeah I thought it was really really excellent well, I've added it to my list. I did also, because I read those 10 pages and I'm like, I'm going to stop. I did start the, whatever it's the preface of Gathering Moss. So I did start a nonfiction mm -hmm. and I just love her voice. And I just want to like, listen to her talk about whatever. I don't care. Yeah. Moss. Yeah. I've never been into <laughs> Moss, but I will just listen to you say anything, Robin. Yeah. Look at her. Tell me a moss lullaby, Robin. Like, <laughs> just talk to me about little plants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. She, I just, yeah. I, I was really sad that I missed like seeing her in person. Um, and I'm like, if she ever comes to my area, I'm gonna go see her. Because <laughs> yeah, oh, I do want to read her moss book at some point, but I also am like, I hope she does another kind of collection of essays <laughs> that's sort of like braiding sweetgrass. Although sometimes I feel weird saying that because like with her and like I also loved um, An the Anthropocene Reviewed, which I know you also yeah. read. Like mm -hmm. I loved both of those, but I'm like, those are very personal. Like some of them are very like intense emotional <laughs> experiences. So it's kind of weird yeah. to be like, I hope you write another one because it's like, Maybe that would not be great for your mental health. I don't know. It's like, I, I would love for John Green to write more essays like that. Like, I just, I really connect with kind of like his ideas and the way that he sees the world and the kinds of things that he finds like meaningful or like sad or whatever. Like, I just, I vibe <laughs> with him a lot, yeah. but I'm like, I don't, I, it feels kind of funny to be like, I hope that you rip out your heart and publish it again that would be nice like <laughs> yeah because he obviously went through a lot there were some of those ones that i like 
was crying. Oh my God. Videos. I was like, my heart is broken. Yeah. And like, it's, you didn't always know from like the setup, which mm -hmm. ones were going to be the really intense one. Like the one that starts with like, this is a weird skill I have. I am like weirdly good at finding trivia on the internet about people. Mm -hmm. And like, that was the one with like the hospital visit, yeah. like the, the oh my gosh, like yeah. sobbing. <laughs> I think I, didn't I like message you after that one and I was like I it am a been, crying mess yeah <laughs> it might have been that one yeah um Good job. you got Natalie got oh, editing done. awesome yeah I was nice. gonna say that I just listened to the preface which is it was six minutes on audio but it's these two pages and already I was like this is beautiful so you so I'll let you know when I'm done but it was already like just like braiding sweet grass in my opinion yeah yeah like she's comparing like the first time seeing snow and like the individual like uniqueness of each snowflake and how beautiful it was because they like magnified and and comparing that to like the beauty of moss and like being able to look at the world and see those like small beauties and yeah. you know she's talking about how mixing like her study of plants with her indigenous background so i'm like already yeah just like writing sweet grass so you might like it more than you think <laughs> yeah i i do think i'm gonna really enjoy it i think like i i'm not sure if i will be as like into the like technical moss parts because i know some people have said like oh that goes on for kind of a long time but like yeah i just i love her writing and her ideas mm -hmm. so much that I'm like, I'm probably going to be like, tell me about Moss Robin. Like, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> um, I want to hear it. I want to know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I actually don't really know anything about Moss. So I'm interested because I, for a while I kept thinking, I don't know why I kept thinking it was about fungus, mm -hmm. so, which is also really fungus. I am actually really interested in because of the whole, like it's, bizarre yeah connection to trees and how we wouldn't have trees if we didn't have it's not a plant but it's not an animal but it's closer to an animal than a plant <laughs> and we can like live on animals and plants and weird, weird. <laughs> it, like helps trees talk to each other did you know that, that that's how, like, yeah that they talk to each and i'm like trees talk to each other <laughs> through you know so i thought it originally was about fungus but then i'm like okay Moss, not as exciting as fungus, but <laughs> I don't know anything about moss, so. Yeah. One of the only things I know about moss, and it's not even really, like, something I know. I just, like, know about it. <laughs> I know other people know it, is that, like, apparently it only grows on, like, one side of a tree, mm -hmm. or there's, like, certain kinds of do, so, like, you can use it as, like, a compass or something. Yes. But obviously I don't know the details, so that's not <laughs> very useful. <laughs> yeah, I know it in the same way you do. I'm like, I've heard that. I've never yeah. used it as a survival technique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll be an expert in moss by the end of it. Yes. So I'll probably, but I also will probably read it slowly because that's how I did Braiding Sweet Sweetgrass. Yeah. Like, I can also, even though I love her voice, I can, it's almost too soothing. So then I start like, stop, I start, I stop listening to the words after a while yeah. and just hear her voice. So I have to just do one essay at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I can make sure I'm focusing. But I'm excited about like everything I'm reading now. <laughs> Great. It's so nice to like start the new year with like, I'm having a good time with all of it. <laughs> yeah. Like... Yeah. I'm excited about that. Oh, and then I need to decide because those are our things I'm going to read just a little section at a time. I got to decide what novel to pick up next. I'm deciding between mm. these two. So this one you've read. Yes. So that's a novel in verse. Yeah, I I think it might have even been the first novel in verse I read, maybe. Um, so that's one option. Or this one that just feels right because it just snowed here. Ooh, that does look like a good snowy one. So it just that's feels... That's a beautiful book. I know. I, I just... The, the I read what, Julia... Did you read Julia and the Whale or Julia and Not the... yet, not yet. And it wasn't a five star, but it was, oh, Julia and the Shark. That's what, it, but it was just such a nice experience. The like, yeah. I like that they just have a color palette and like stay in the color palette and like just have, yeah, 
nice little pictures. And so I think this will be good for like the fact that it's finally snowing here in Minnesota. So maybe this one, but then I, I have been wanting to read this one for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if there's like a, a certain vibe that you're kind of like thinking of matching that maybe would be the way to go because I mean a time to dance like it is a novel in verse so it reads pretty quick so I don't feel like it's as like mm -hmm. critical that you read it like right when you have a chance yeah. to if that makes sense um I don't know I mean I obviously really enjoyed it and I I recommend it but I think if you're like looking for winter vibes the other book looks wintry my other thing is, I wonder if I should wait and read this with my daughter. Because, like, when my mom mm -hmm. is here, we always read a chapter book together. Like, me and the, my older daughter and my mom. And I should see if my daughter wants to pick this. Mm, that might be good. Because well. she hasn't picked it. So I'll ask her tomorrow. Maybe I'll start a time to dance and ask her tomorrow if she wants to read that. When Grandma's here. Because we, yeah. So we read, like, last Thanksgiving, we read The Hobbit together. And we read... All of the books in, like, the Graceland books, where the mountain meets moon and all those, we read with my yeah. mom. Like, For a second, I thought you said Graceland, and I'm like, that can't be right. Those no. are not kids' books. Those are like, not eight-year-old like appropriate. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's why my brain was like, that's not what she said. Like, think about it. Grace Lynn. <laughs> Grace Lynn. Yes, those, those are appropriate. Yeah. Yes, and we read those because I think those were really good, like, yeah. Lovely ones to read out loud with the little stories. And the pictures are beautiful. So I feel like it's a good sort of like, it's like you, you, kids who are reading chapter books, but they might still mm -hmm. appreciate having some pictures. Like, Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I love it when a book has pictures. I, I like love it. illustrated <laughs> books. Yeah. I was like more picture, books picture. Or, I, wait, agree. Pictures. <laughs> I agree. I was actually looking at, um, like thinking about making some of my favorites lists. I'm like, I read so many amazing picture books. I am excited to talk about them. Well, and just like something that would have occasional pictures, like, um, you know, a lot of the classics, if they're the fancier version, they'll have the like mm -hmm. plates from the old books. Yes. Like, yeah. I just want a few pictures in the book. Like how much is this yeah. to, I know it probably costs a lot more, so they can't do it in everything, but give me more or like, I haven't read it yet, but does Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies have pictures? Because that seems like a, t a book like that should have mm. pictures in it. Yeah. In my opinion. I don't know if it does. I agree. I think more books should have pictures. I actually, I just read one of the like Christmassy books I read in December was Juniper's Christmas by Owen Colfer, which was like fine. It's not my favorite thing he wrote, but one of the things that was really cool is it did have illustrations which I didn't realize when I picked it up so that was like a cool surprise like oh there's beautiful art in here that's nice look at this what a fun bonus um mm -hmm. yeah yeah speaking of beautiful books I did bring this to show you because it, it oh, is a cut out that is so pretty so it's got this like this is the end papers yeah and I mean, the same pictures in the back. So it's just that. Yeah, but that is so cool. Her books are just so pretty. Yeah. It doesn't have pictures in the story, but. Is the publisher Levine Carrito because, uh, or the imprint, because mm -hmm. the, that one, they did A Lots Away as well, which is oh, also okay. a really beautifully constructed book. Like even yeah. like the texture of like the cover and the paper and mm -hmm. it has like the little ghost dog like under the cover. So I think it's Levine Carrito for, for and it. Um, yeah, that's who published this. Okay. Cover See, I, guess I, just like, I guess I just like the way they design their books. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I wonder, I should, I don't think I have my last Quintista. I think it's packed away because I only unpacked my, TBR books and I wonder if it's the same artist or if it's a different artist. Yeah. Beautiful though. Either way. So I'm excited when I saw that in the bookstore. I'm like, I must have that. Yeah. Is that, I don't know how long it is. Is that when you're going to read for short stack? Reform? No, it's longer. It's probably, I mean, I mean, I just sent it down. But how long is that? It's around 400. 
Okay. Okay. For some reason, I was thinking it was a novella, and I don't know why. No, it's a full length. Um, maybe I'll read it next month uh, because I'm excited to read it. But I do want to get like a bunch of these. Oh, Chris just got it too. It's so pretty. I had to look up how to pronounce it because I didn't know. Alabrijas, I think is how it is. Yeah. Um, because and I didn't know what those were, but they're like the little colored fantastical animal statues, like the. Have you have you watched Coco yet? No. Oh my God, Kelly. <laughs> I need to. Be, I know. I need to watch it. My daughter is too afraid, so I just need to watch it myself. I just need to see. It is so good. If you are anything like me, you will cry through the last half hour. But it's a ten out of ten oh. experience. <laughs> I mean, I was I cried the first like three times I watched Encanto. Oh my god, yeah. It took me about three times before I'm like, okay, I'm done crying. I finished all of the like yeah. family trauma. Like yeah. <laughs> I've gotten this all out. And, and you know, by the time the kids have watched it, like a hundred time, you know, I'm like, okay, no tears being shed on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm emotionally prepared. Yeah. yeah. I go, I, I think just, is it's not just like one of my favorite Disney movies. I think it's one of my favorite movies in general. Like I mm -hmm. love it, but it is one of those where it's like, I have seen it multiple times. And every time I'm like, I like, I'm prepared. I know what's coming. I'll be mm -hmm. fine. And then like we get to the end and I'm just ugly tears, just streaming down my face. It's so I tell, good. I will tell my husband that we have to watch it next date night because we were both watching it with my daughter and she made us turn it off because she was scared. And so mm. I think, I think he would want to watch it too. Like we just never yes. got around to watching him. So see, Krista also bawling her eyes out. And you haven't watched Encanto? You need to watch Encanto. <laughs> you will cry. Krista will definitely cry during it. Also, okay, like I don't, <laughs> there's like the the intense stuff at the end and like the catharsis mm -hmm. of that for Encanto where I definitely cry at that as well. But like a lot of times it's because I like the soundtrack is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I play, I play the soundtrack sometimes. It's like, even just listening to Waiting on a Miracle sometimes oh gets me. I, oh I can't God. remember. <laughs> One time I was like playing it as I'm like doing dishes or something and I'm just standing here like crying as it's like, but Maribel did do all those things. <laughs> like, I know my, my daughters make me fast forward when we listen to it in the car. They make me fast forward to it because I think it's a little slow for them. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, this is the song that makes me cry and I want to listen to it and I want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Or even like, so like as, as like an eldest daughter, like even Louisa's um, yeah. song, it's like, it's fun, you know, and it's like fast and it's, it's not like a, it's not like a ballad like Mirabelle's is, but like even that one often like watching it or like listening to it just gets me mm -hmm. in my feelings as well. Like I just can't. <laughs> it's all the family dynamics. It's so good. Yeah. I, I yeah. get what you're saying, Krista. There was one. Oh, the new little mermaid. I really want to watch it, but it's like, I just forget about animated. Right, well, that was not even animated. That's a live one, but it's still like kids yeah. movies. I forget to like watch these that are really good. Like I yeah. like, kids movies I just don't think about it I'm just bad at watching new movies in general like yeah, I, too, too. like once once I finally do like watch something new and it's something I enjoy then like yes I will re-watch it but like even if it's something I know I'm gonna love and that I'm really excited to watch I have to like push myself to watch a new mm -hmm. thing it's weird exactly Chris yeah surface pressure like even just I forget who I was talking to about this yeah. but like I was just talking about like the lyrics and like the give it to your sister never wonder if it's like I just yeah being an oldest sister especially yes. um or just but like you said Kelly okay. just like family dynamics in general yeah I mean because I mean like her sister will play with her can you imagine like in the beginning especially mm -hmm. I'm like she's just a little kid and wants her yeah. sister to play with her every, and, every time I see like a meme or a post about how like the frozen parents are kind of terrible i'm like yeah like they sort of like i understand that they were scared and they didn't there wasn't a lot of like options they felt like but i'm like you really messed up these kids <laughs> like gosh yeah yeah sorry you love you hear my screamer i oh, think somebody so doesn't want to go to bed we love a little emotional trauma with our lighthearted children's movies <laughs> yeah yep 
but I, yeah, I definitely wa will watch Coco. Cause like my husband and I wa have watched Brave twice and he's even said, he's like, this is one of my favorite movies. So he likes animated movies and we watch them together and enjoy like the really good ones. But yeah, we really yeah. love Brave and we wanted our to watch it with my daughter, but she saw the trailer and the bear part scared her. So yeah, I mean, there are, yeah, there are definitely intense parts. Like I like watching it as an adult, like you get to the end and like, I, I don't know if anyone's watching this who hasn't like seen Brave, but it's like, they get awfully close to like doing something. And I'm like, this is a lot. Like this yeah. is like, really stressful. And I am like a full adult. So I can't yeah. imagine. Yeah. That, that, that end scene is very intense. So I could yeah. see why she wouldn't, because I don't have all of that part in the trailer, but they have like some of the bear kind of jumping out kind of scenes yeah. in the trailer and she didn't like that. But I think she would love it in the fact that it's like, um, just like this girl, like say it, I yeah. do whatever is, I want. Is she the daughter who, when you were talking about like a thousand and one nights, she was like so into it. Cause she's like, she's tricking him. Is that, yes, is this that the, is the one who was nice. like, every time we would get back to Scheherazade, she's like, yeah, telling her story. She's going to survive longer. <laughs> Cheering on Sherazad. So I was like, yeah, she would like that one, I think. She's all about yeah. the girl power. Well, and my, so like our friend that was staying here this week is my, is her godmother. And she was wearing this shirt one day that was, that had a penguin on it. It said, um, penguins against the patriarchy. And my daughter's like, what does that mean? What is the patriarchy? <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> well it's a system that values men over women and like was it kind of explaining it and my daughter's like um that's not cool and then i just walked away <laughs> i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right Actually, that just reminded me have you seen the barbie movie yet with no no it's okay it took me a while to finally get to it but i loved it but it is also a great one for smashing the patriarchy yeah. it was it was really good i want to um, watch it eventually we just don't watch things in the movie theater anymore so i have to like oh i don't i don't either i waited till it was on dvd so <laughs> i feel well, and we don't have a dvd player so i i'm sure there's places i can rent it like on yeah. the, like streaming so um, we'll see i just really bad about like newer movies because i have to like wait for them to either come to a service i have or like find a way to rent them or yeah. from, like well and like I, I told you I like the um, amount of time between watching new movies is like kind of ridiculous like sometimes when we do our classic live show we'll do like a fun question as like an intro and some a lot of times Taylor will be like what was the last movie you loved and I swear there were like three in a row where I'm like it's still in console <laughs> because yeah. I just don't watch new stuff yeah. like so I feel I you I did watch a lot of movies. I do, watch, every year I watch a lot of movies in December because I watch Hallmark Christmas movies. Mm. And then I probably don't watch another movie for like six months. <laughs> yep. 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 We watch, like, if my husband are going to watch something, we often will watch like a TV show or a miniseries or something like that. Yep. So we're not like, because it, cause it always feels like, oh, a movie that's really long. And then you end up watching, like, two episodes of a 45-minute right. television show. So it's like, well, we could have watched a movie. <laughs> yeah, but it feels like less of a commitment. Yeah. Yeah, because you could always have stopped after that first one. <laughs> Theoretically, it's shorter. Yeah. Um, when I've gotten, like, super into visual novels or the, over the last few months, so I feel like I've been watching even less than I normally would because mm -hmm. that sort of... I don't know. I guess that's like taking the space of my like entertainment. I'm doing that instead. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. So. Yeah, I get it. I don't know what's going on with the screaming is still. <laughs> yeah, you're like noises of distress. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should do a. Because she's right in the other room because that's where her bedroom is. So maybe we should do a sprint and I can go see if he needs some help. Right. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. So let's, do, oh, sorry. Do you want to do till zero zero again? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want to mute and go find out.
Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, she is calmed down now. <laughs> oh, well, good. I was like, how was the screaming outcome? Yeah, he said that she was just overtired and she was just mm -hmm. not understanding what was going on. Yeah. Well, I'm glad everything was okay. Yeah, but it's always like she they are sleeping in the same room. So like she was screaming. So then the other one was like, I am not going to bed because I can't go to bed with the screaming. So it was a little bit of chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Things are better now. Good, good. I also, I didn't notice that we're both wearing green tops. That's cool. <laughs> green. Yeah, I was actually wondering if this is going to be too hot because it's like warmer on the second floor of my house and the first floor. And this is like very cozy, but I've been good. 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 Is this one you made? Yeah. Yeah. I, made I thought this it's so exciting. I've made, let me show you. I've made like 10 inches. Hey. <laughs> That's so cool though, that you're getting into it. Yeah, so that was the first. I was like, I'm just going to start with a scarf. It's a rectangle. I can handle it. We'll see yeah. what comes of it next time. Well, what I move up to. Maybe a bigger rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> like, I did. It took me a, a while when I was knitting uh, to feel ready to tackle things that had more, like, I mean, I didn't do. I didn't do socks for probably like 10 years, maybe. Oh, wow. um, maybe a little less than that, maybe like eight to 10. But yeah, it's, there was like a long stretch of time where I'm like, I'm fine here. I'm just yeah. gonna keep, gonna keep doing my scarves, my little like uh, coin purse, do, do a few hats, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I'm hoping to, like, so I did this just like, by watching YouTube videos because I was like, I need to start. And my, my husband had got me like money to take a class, but the classes for January were all full. And I was like, I need to stop saying I'm going to take a class and not doing it. So I'm just going to do this. And then I thought I'll still take the class because there are times when I am like getting to a point where I want to ask a question, but it's yeah. hard when you're just learning yourself. So I'm like, okay, I'm still like have learned the basic stitch or whatever, but I will go to the class so that I could ask the questions that I wanted to know <laughs> when I was doing. Yeah, this. yeah. Um, I mean, and I'm I'm self taught as a knitter, and it is nice to be able to have people that you can ask like a question to. But there are a lot of great resources. So yeah, well, in this this um, yarn store one, it's like walking distance from my house which is great and two they have a class called or not it's not like a class it's like you pay to time with their instructors if you have a trouble with any of your projects so that's say, cool so you could just be like i need an hour of your time or a half hour of your time and you just pay them for it so that you, they can troubleshoot what what your issue is that's awesome yeah so i'm like that's like almost better than doing a class because then you can just pick whatever you want and then if you run into yeah. trouble I'm like, you that have been doing this all this time, tell me what I did wrong or what, what how do yeah, I, yeah. I do whatever. Well, and especially, and like this still, I still have this happen, even though I've been doing it a while, is like sometimes you'll be stuck on something where it's like, I don't even know what to call this. So I can't mm -hmm. just like Google how to fix the problem, yeah. you know? And knitting doctors, I'm like, yeah. yeah. It's like, I just need you to like, give me the first like few things or like, yeah. Sometimes you just need a little something. Yeah. Or it's like, I have this one concept that I am struggling with, but if you can fix it for me, then I'm good. Like, Yeah. And you don't want to no. like take a whole class on that necessarily. You just want somebody to tell you. And it's like, I'm fine paying for their expertise. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. What else? Did you I finished all the, po okay. Well, that's cool. How what did you think of it? Cause it sounds really interesting. So I am interested to hear what you have to say. Oh, so speaking of poetry, I read another 10 poems or 10 pages. And so far, 
all of them were about parenthood except for one. And it actually made me think of what you were saying before you were talking about, what were you talking about? Oh, the book prequel mm -hmm. that you were talking about and how like with what's coming up and how it's like, um, you know, I don't know if you, did you say we've made it through worse? To, did you say something like that? Something? Yeah. I said something like it's bad, but like we've beaten this before and we can again. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the vibe of the book. Well, this poem that's not about, it was like the only one so far that hasn't been about parenthood. It's called when people say we have made it through worse before. And if you, do you want me to read it to you? So it's like when people say we have made it through worse before, all I hear is the wind slapping against all the gravestones of those who did not make it. Those who did not survive to see the confetti fall from the sky. Those who did not live to watch the parade roll down the street. I have grown accustomed to a life of aphorisms meant to assuage my fears. Pithy sayings meant to convey that all ends up fine in the end. But there is no solace in rearranging language to make a different word tell the same lie. Sometimes the moral arc of the universe does not bend in a direction that comforts us. Sometimes it bends in ways we don't expect, and there are people who fall off in the process. Please, dear reader, do not say that I'm hopeless. I believe there is a better future to fight for. I simply accept the possibility that I may not live to see it. I have grown wary of weary of telling myself lies that I might one day begin to believe. We are not all left standing after the war has ended. Some of us have become ghosts by the time the dust has settled. And I was like, that just yeah. felt like it called back to what you were talking in like, yeah, that, yeah, we've been through worse before we've been through hard things, but we're not all going to make it through the, the next, you know, like yeah. any of them, we don't, all make it yeah through. it's worth fighting for but we don't all make it yeah and that's that's one of the things that i really appreciated about prequel is that it wasn't like a like a buck up we can do it it was like look at how close it was you know like this is like we have to take it seriously mm -hmm. um and there are there are people who have been doing this work for a long time but that doesn't mean that we can not worry about it, you know? So yeah. yeah, I like that poem a lot that actually going back to the other thing we were talking about, which is <laughs> John Green's essays. I remember there were like, maybe he said this in multiple essays. I don't know, but I know there was at least one I'm thinking of. It was one of the ones where he was talking about, um, might've been the plague essay where he was talking about like the pandemic, obviously. And, um, the the black death and how devastating it was and like i remember that he was talking about how like when people say things like we survived you know like we made it through and everything and it's like a lot of people don't mm -hmm. and yeah so i i really like that poem because like yeah i feel i get why people say that and i you know and i i'm sure i've said s similar things but it also leaves out the fact that being able to say that is a privilege not everybody gets yeah. as well. Like, I'm so. even thinking about COVID, like, you know, we can now be like, oh, it, people will say, oh, it wasn't so bad or it's not so bad and all stuff. And I'm like, well, there are still a lot of people that died. Like, this wasn't like yes. just nothing. Yes. Like, because so, I think some people think, oh, we overreacted. I'm like, you do realize that. Oh my God, no. <laughs> it's fifth. Like, I even looked this up because we're about to, my daughter and I are about to learn about the Black Plague. Or mm -hmm. black death, or you know that, mm -hmm. and I was like, I wanted to just randomly know what are the like top plagues or you know whatever pandemics, and COVID is five, so yeah. it's not like it was nothing yeah. or that. We're just and, like and it's like the the long term effects and the long term mm -hmm. health problems and yeah, it's it's a lot, and I get that it could have been worse, but like, what a horrible thing to say to people who have like, Lost already something. like, I get, yeah, I get, I get so pissed off. Like I'm still seeing, and I, I'm sure you see a lot of this with like your kids being in school, but it's like, they're talking about like, oh, like 
kids test scores are down or like their um you know their reading scores really suffered during like virtual learning and stuff and it's like okay did you stop to think that maybe the issue was like the plague not like yeah we're learning differently or like the number like it is so sad like the number of kids who lost a primary guardian or caregiver yeah. to covid it's a huge number it's like you don't think maybe losing their parents or their grandparents or like that could be like the factor not like screens are bad kids can't learn <laughs> like yeah just it seems very narrow-minded <laughs> yeah yeah i like what you're saying here like you want to have hope but you also want to like acknowledge that there have been sacrifices like that. Yeah. There's both. Yeah. Um, and because also like, I don't think like when I, when I read or watch something, it's like, to me, it doesn't feel hopeful if it doesn't acknowledge reality as well. Yeah. Like actually, like I've been reading um, more about like climate optimism and um that's kind of like the most important thing about it is like, it doesn't mean pretending that there's not a problem. It means like the only way you're going to get people to keep fighting for it is if you acknowledge that we can still do stuff. Like, cause when has, when has like telling somebody we're doomed, there's nothing you can do. When has that ever motivated anybody? Yeah, <laughs> like, you've got to have hope, but you also have to be realistic that it's not all like rose colored yes. glasses that like, exactly. we've got things to do. We've got work. To yeah. Do. And that's and that's what makes the optimism feel real and meaningful is that it's it's grounded in reality, you know. In yeah, yeah. And I agree. His writing is beautiful. Like even like, I don't. I'm not even a huge poetry person, and so far I've enjoyed like every single poem in the 20 pages that I've read so far. Like his his writing, yeah. even when it was like the hard stuff and how the world word was passed, his writing was just so good. Yeah. So. Let's yeah, see. we've got a couple things. So yeah, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a beautiful project. Discovered many new poets. I'm gonna have to check that out because I do yeah. need to find new poets because obviously I can enjoy poetry and I didn't. I guess I've always kind of been a little like, oh, I don't like poetry because I've only been like forced to read really old, old poets. Yeah, yeah, like old dead white guys. I'm like, you know, yeah. maybe, <laughs> maybe I can read some more current poetry or like. Harlem Renaissance poetry still sounds good too. Like, yeah, yeah. I think because I also used to be, I was like, oh, I don't, I just don't like poetry. Like, that's just not something I enjoy. And it wasn't until I was in college, and um, one of my like core requirements was like poetry was one of the classes that filled that. So I took the poetry class, and we ended up reading, like, I, I don't know. I guess just the the poets that my professor chose overall really tended to align with like my reading taste because I was like I love this like I really really like some of these so I yeah I think it's I think it's hard to start reading poetry because it's like you have no idea what you like and you have no idea what to try but once you have even a little bit of that sense I think it gets a lot easier um Mary Oliver is another one I would really recommend to people because I think she 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 was a more modern poet but it doesn't have it doesn't have the same kind of like stylistic choices as like i think what people think of as modern poetry if yeah. that makes sense so yeah. I, yeah really love her and i and i that's what we were saying natalie i agree a balance yep um and exactly. she also, um new to me most of them are not like yeah um but i think it's also sometimes things like the Harlem Renaissance, a lot of those artists, I know we had the obligatory one novel by somebody from the Harlem Renaissance. Right. Or a, like a single Langston Hughes poem. <laughs> like yeah, It would be like, Oh, we're reading a Langston Hughes poem. And maybe like, I think we read in college native son. And that was like, that's it. You get a poem and you get a novel. And that's like, yeah. <laughs> and I look now as an adult, I'm like, um, there were like so many black artists of the time that like, so yeah, this is a point of like that. Yes, there were, they, they are old, you know, and, and probably not alive anymore, but there's a lot of good stuff out there that we haven't seen. Yeah. And Natalie, I had the same experience of like, I, loved so many of them and it's like I had never heard of most of these poets 
-hmm. So. Oh, hi. Oh, nice. I actually, I read that one recently. Oh, yeah. that is on my list. I had actually started it um, and read it like three chapters, but then had to return it to the library. So I have it back on hold. So. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I actually ended up doing the audio for that one because I was doing a lot of puzzles <laughs> at the time. So it worked out well. And the audio was really good. I liked the narrator a lot. Oh, that's good to know. Maybe I should try the audio because it seems like it's one of those where I'm not allowed to renew it. And so if I don't get mm -hmm. around to it right when I get it out from the library, then it's like, oh, it's gone yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you just read more of the teacup. Yes. The I am words. actually, I'm very close. I think I've got like 25 pages Ooh. left. So well, you're going to finish that tonight. Yeah, it's going really well. And I am really liking it. And I also like the the conflict or the third act breakup sort of thing. It doesn't bother me as much because it's a novella and the situation they're in. I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to fight about this at some point. Like it, like it almost wouldn't make sense if this wasn't an issue. Yeah. So even though I hate that sort of last minute like breakup or last minute conflict, I like understand it here. So yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. And I do think part of it could be that it's like it in comparison to the other two novellas I read in the series so far, I think I'm like, maybe being even more generous to this one. But even without that, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, the narrator, I thought she was she was really good. And there was something about like, the the story and the genre combination that I'm like, the audio just worked really well for me. I think because like, there was more of the like survival prairie stuff than I expected, which is not usually my vibe. So having it as an audio was really good for me because I could have somebody else read it and I just listen. That's a good thought. Cause even, I mean, I hadn't gotten to that yet. I only got when like she'd gone off the train or whatever, like it's very beginning. Yeah. Of yeah. The thing. Um, so like I didn't get in very far, but it felt like a story that would do well as orally, like, told yes like yeah felt, i like, definitely the story. yeah definitely think it was for me so maybe i'll see i don't know how long the line will be for that i, don't I mean I can, I can recommend it as a puzzle book as well yes <laughs> i know I, you do puzzles i did okay so i did because i haven't been doing puzzles lately because we only have one table it's the dining room table that my kids also use as their art table so it's like it's never clear um, yes so i haven't been doing puzzles but for Advent, I got myself a puzzle calendar. Advent yeah. Calendar. And I ended up doing it on the top of my dresser, which was not the best because I lost a piece behind the dresser. And so that'll be there until we move. <laughs> I <can't> move my <laughs> dresser. <laughs> it's gone forever. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's because it's like a high. So, I mean, it wasn't like the best for doing a puzzle, but like for yeah. doing like one square a day, it worked out. It worked out. Yeah. Good. Have you, have you thought, I mean, I guess it wouldn't help with the fact that like your daughters also use it for like projects and stuff, but have you looked into one of those like roll up things? Cause like I have one that I use sometimes and it's not perfect. Like it's not like none of the pieces come apart when you use it, but it has made a huge difference. So it's yeah. like, even if it's a big puzzle and it's like, I'm spreading out like on the dining room table working on it, I can still get it out of the way. And then later when I go back to it, it's like, there's a, there's a couple pieces I need to reattach, but it's, it helps a lot. Like there's yeah. not a lot of fixing to do. So I don't know if that would be an option, but. Yeah, I might, maybe I'll try it. Like, cause it's just so hard. Cause they hard it's hardly ever clear. I basically like right before dinner, I'm like, can you guys clean some stuff off the table? So we can right. Eat? And then there are those days that we're like, okay, we are eating in the living room because it's good. Yes. So, so it become, it just like they, my youngest is a big art. So she has just like art supplies out all the time. Yeah. And so it's hard to like even clear it enough to, unless I want to just like spend my whole evening clearing off the table. Yeah. Yeah. First time here. And I'm going to read Jade War for Funnily by Funnily. I have not read that series, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. But I don't think it's my style of fantasy, but I've heard good things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was going back and forth on whether to try it because there are 
things about it I think I would really like. But then I also heard people describe it, like people who enjoyed it, describe it as like, oh, everybody's a horrible person and everybody's a mess. And I'm like, I don't know if that would be like, I sometimes that works for me. But most of the time I find that very frustrating where I'm like, you are all causing your own problems, <laughs> which I know that like in general, that's just a thing humans do. So it's not that I never have patience for it, but there's like a certain flavor of it or a certain intensity where I find that more frustrating. But I also have heard like pretty much only fantastic things about it. So I might still try it someday. I don't yeah. know. Maybe someday. I have, I have so many fantasy series on my list though. I gotta like <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually wanted to try, didn't finally just come out, out the new one. There was a novella. Oh yeah. So I thought yeah. I would try that one to see if I liked her writing. And then that might persuade me to go back to the Jade yeah. trilogy. If like, I liked her writing in general. And I thought, and it was the same way with Margaret Atwood, but I'm like, I'm going to start with the small one. Yeah. See if I like her writing. Yeah. That's yeah. It. And that actually, so I have found that I really like when it's fantasy combined with like gangster or mafia stuff. Like I don't like oh, that really? stuff in like, yeah, <laughs> isn't that weird? Isn't that bizarre? Like I don't like that in contemporary or like historicals or anything like that. I, it's not my vibe, but for some reason you put magic in it and I'm like now I'm intrigued <laughs> like, interesting because that's what always turns me off I'm like mm -hmm. and I yeah. guess it's just, like urban fantasy in general is not really something that I find that yeah, I interesting I have the like strings you know the strings that like you hang the sweater <laughs> up with and I'm like I usually chop them off but it like appeared in my sleeve I'm like where did you come from <laughs> why are you here yeah <laughs> like, why is this I should have cut this off it's annoying yeah, yeah. So maybe someday we'll see I've got so many like I recorded yeah. my video. I I was really good and I recorded all these videos because originally I was going to do book miss, but then I just was like, I am not. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me say goodbye to Krista. I think off to bed. Yeah. Under 250 oh, is kind of our, nice. our general idea anyway. So it totally there counts. You so you made it. You made it happen. Good night, Krista. Good to see you yes. or talk to you for a little bit. Glad you got to join. Um, yeah. So I was like all prepped to do book miss. I had all my stuff planned out. And then I was like, I just don't have time to record these videos before yeah. we have a ton of family coming in for the holidays. And I didn't want to stress myself out. So I was like, I'm just going to like record the videos that are like the topics that I was already going to do, but just spread them out. And I thought I would have like several in F December and then the rest in January. Cause I recorded three of the videos and I have only posted one, which was <laughs> The TBR for this readathon. And then the other two, I was like, they've been sitting there for two weeks and I haven't edited them. It's a good thing I did not <laughs> decide to do book miss because <laughs> I just haven't had time to focus on that. So I have yeah. three more to record and I have two recorded. And the two I recorded were the ones that are like the books I want to read next year, like the mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. plan. And, the, and, and there's a lot of fantasy in there. So probably yeah. not going to do <laughs> add new things to that list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah like, and that's something like when it works for me, it really works. Um, so I, I'm curious, like I might, I might end up trying them at some point, but I'm glad you're enjoying the book so far, Bryce. Um, I have heard like that the world is very interesting and that is one of the things that has kind of like intrigued me about it. Um, yeah. Well, we'll see. I do want to read like, since we moved we're going to be moving again at some point when we find, find a house, I'm assuming in the summer, because nobody is selling a house right now um, <laughs> in the middle of winter in Minnesota. So like, I'm a, I kind of really would like to have a lot of the books off of my physical TBR read before we move, which seems like a big thought, but there aren't. You know. I found it was really helpful doing the TBR, the physical TBR challenge with Julia. So I don't know if that's like in a, in a more low key way, if that is something that might help, but uh, I found it very helpful for, cause even just having to input how many books I bought in a month, I was like, Hmm, no, this is not good. Like, I need to read these. Yeah. yeah. And I've done, I mean, I made that kind of choice of not, only buying like locally. So I don't think I'm going to go crazy buying books, but yeah, just being able to like, especially since they have no room, I already have like books 
stacked in front of on the bottom shelf because this is the only shelf I have at this house. And so, yeah. Or even, even like, um, not so much what me and Julia are doing, but even like what, um, Izzy and Bethany have been doing with the like, read what you own. Mm -hmm. Like even just having that check in every yeah. time you do a haul, I think like I am not consistent enough with my hauls or I would try to do that as well, but, um, you're pretty good at keeping up with yours. So I don't know if that could maybe be a way to, I don't know. I also feel though, like from what I was seeing in your like year sort of wrap up, it seems like you're doing pretty well with it. So maybe you don't even need to add extra stuff, but I was just thinking for extra motivation. Yeah. I'm still getting way too many library books, which I like <laughs> my library, I like going to the library, but I'm like, I don't know all these books. I should focus. So I need to get back to what I was doing at the beginning of last year, which was making sure 60% of the books I read each month are ones I own. Mm -hmm. So it gives me the freedom to go to the library, but that like all went out the window as soon as like I started packing up books. So yeah. there was a huge amount of time when I was only using the library or online, you know, like eBooks and audiobooks. So now that we're here, I'm like, I can go back to 60%. So just get a couple. But the problem is I go to the library and then I'm suddenly like, I'm bringing home 20 books. I'm like, no. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a good problem to have, but it is hard to, mm -hmm. hard to work on your TBR when you're also like, these things all look good. <laughs> yes. And I, I have ones on my TBR I want to read, which is why I think this readathon is helpful for me because I'm getting excited about the, the short things and like, oh, I can, mm -hmm. if I finished all the things on my list, I will have like 30 books off of my physical TBR. Yeah. Which I doubt it's going to happen because we're on like the, what, day six and I finished one book. But who knows? Maybe yeah. all the ones that are really tiny will add up at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even if you don't hit like every single short book that you thought about reading it's like that's still like a big number you know to clear off so yep yeah though I'd be happy I mean if I get to like 20 books this month and they're mostly mine that would be great yeah get some stuff done we'll see what next month comes I don't have any idea there was like this challenge I'm in for a group and, and one of the prompts was something like read a book from somebody else's February TBR. And I'm like, you expect us to have our February TBR planned out already so that somebody can look yeah. and see what we're reading. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I know. Like I, I'm really proud of myself that I got my TBR for this readathon up relatively early in January. Um, because that, that is not always something I'm good at doing. And I was like, because I am a co-host, it made me do mm -hmm. it sooner, which is good. Um, so like in theory, I would like to be, when I know that I'm going to have a like video about my TBR, I want that to come out like in the first week, yeah. which is not that big of an ask, but for me it is. So yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll see. I found that I, can't plan my TBRs too early because if I plan them too early, I suddenly want to read those books and then I'm not reading the books that I mm -hmm. am supposed to read for the current month. So I'm like, I can't plan February until we're at the very end of January or I'll just like give up on all the short books and start reading February. Yeah. So it's better to wait. <sighs> yeah. It's a, it's a fine line. It's like you need to be prepared so that you have your ideas of what you want to read that you can pick from but you don't want to be so prepared that you're like, I'm just going to read these books now and I want yeah. to. Throw everything else out the window. I'm going to start now. Yeah. yeah. I want to look up what else. Have you read anything else by this author? Yes. I Well, I think I have. Let me, I think I've read, I know I've read Climbing the Stairs by her. I don't know if I've read any of her others. Let me look. Oh, she wrote um, The Bridge Home. I think that, that I've seen that cover before. Actually, this is a good reminder that I want to read more from her. Um, Was that other one a poem book too? or No. no. Uh, Climbing the Stairs is in prose. 
um, it's a historical, but it's, it's not, I think it's, I think it's around the time of, uh, India's independence from Britain, uh, like right before that in like the lead up to that, because that was like a big part of the story. So it's historical, but it's not from like super far back if that's not, um, something you gravitate to, but Yeah, so those are the two books I've read from her. And it looks like her most recent is like she was in an anthology called Calling the Moon, which is 16 period stories from BIPOC authors, which sounds really interesting. Um, also had, who are we just talking about? Nikki Grimes. Was that something? Yes, it does. Let me look. Who else? Because I've, I've read something by Erin Entrada Kelly, which I loved. Uh, Christina Sun Sun Turnblad, I haven't read yet, but I know everybody loves her. Um, Ibiza Boy, I have really enjoyed. Nikki Grimes, Margarita Engel, Sadia Faruqi. Like I, I'm putting this on my list. I have to read it now. <laughs> like yeah. that sounds, and I think that's great that like we're getting anthologies about things like periods. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was just talking to my husband actually yesterday about like we should start like what preparing of like what we're gonna stock and have like for because i mean my daughter's only eight but girls are getting their periods early and i'm like i don't want to be surprised and be like i have yeah. no book for you i have no supplies yeah. for when it happens so that might be a book to get that we could yeah or even like i mean if they have like friends or classmates who get it very mm -hmm. young just kind of like knowing what's going on so like you like you said you don't want to like that would be really stressful for her to like be completely surprised by it, you know? Yeah. Um, and she's not like, we have read, uh, but we have a book that's like about all the systems of the body and yeah. it talks about in the like um, reproductive system, it talks about um, puberty. And so the look on her face when she found out she was going to bleed every month <laughs> for like several days was like, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is it is like so wild that it's like yeah it's just life just something you got to put up with if you have a certain kind of body like yeah so, like in any in any other circumstance that would be like so alarming but it's yes. like, <laughs> just just the way it is it's perfectly normal so she knows wh what it is but mm -hmm. i still want more of a book about like puberty probably in general just so that yeah I, it's been a, obviously it's been a long time since I read it or used it. I remember that American Girl had a couple that I think were pretty good. Um, yeah. And also like it might've been, they had, they had like one that was about like specifically about like the body and things that might, you know, happen and questions you might have. And then there was also one that was more of like, I think it was like a smart girl's guide to Maybe it was school or they had one that was about like, I don't know, like boy problems and stuff, which is obviously like different and more specific. Yeah. But I remember one of the things that they talked about in it was like if like if you have like an accident at school, you know, yeah. and that I, I think that's like a really helpful thing to include. And like also the way that like the American Bro American Girl books like talked about it is like even the problems that like adults wouldn't view as being like catastrophic. It's like, they are when you're that age and that's like, okay. Like I remember one of the scenarios I talked about is like, what if somebody spreads a rumor that you have a crush on somebody else? Yeah. And you know, like, yeah, that's like a humiliating thing when you're like in, in elementary school or middle school. But like, just because as an adult, it wouldn't feel the same. Doesn't mean that that's not like a problem that kids should be able to have like, resources about so. yeah and i i agree this anthology about menstruation and it's like from bipoc authors so i i think it's got a lot yeah. of diversity in it and so i think that'll be good i might yeah. get it um but yeah i agree the like scenarios like my daughter last week she something happened that we had to cancel a play date that she had planned and she it wasn't just that she was upset that her play date was canceled she's like 
they're never going to want to be friends with me again because I've canceled on them and they'll think I don't like them and all this stuff. I'm like, that seems like going really far. But then I'm like, that's my adult mind. It's like, whatever, you cancel things all the time. You make up the yeah. appointment. But she was just like, it's the end of the yeah. world. They're not going to be my friend anymore because of one cancel. Like that is, that is how it feels, you know? Like, yeah. So I like when when books acknowledge that like I mean even when we talk about like middle grade authors that we really mm -hmm. like it's like one of the things that I I feel like we tend to appreciate mm -hmm. is when they do a good job of like handling the problems like respectfully where it's yeah. like yeah if you're an adult reading this you can obviously see that this is not the end of the world but that doesn't change the fact that it is when it's happening to you you know like um I, I feel like Christine Day is one of the authors who does that really well where it's like some of the book's issues are like really big things like her her, her debut dealt with like family separation and like a history of like you know close like um how like adoption was like weaponized against like native parents you know and, and like yeah. obviously not how adoption is supposed to work so like there was a lot of heavy stuff in it but also the main character was dealing with like uh, basically a friendship breakup and how much that hurts. And it's like, yeah, like if, if you could be objective about it, you'd be like, this is a smaller scale problem, but also it's not, <laughs> you know, like it does still matter. So yeah. Yep. So do we want to do, I guess it's earlier for you, right? Nine, eight, seven. I, I am fine either way. I'm going to probably grab something to eat if we do a, Mm -hmm. another sprint and then come back and read so i i have no preference yeah. <laughs> it's very unhelpful no i just think maybe we should do another one just because and then we'll find out i mean i'm not tired but we'll see how i am yeah I, i'm not feeling super sleepy i'm gonna get something to eat and then i probably will be able to finish this i mean i definitely can finish it tonight and yeah. if that happens during sprints that's great if not it's fine then i'll do it later so yeah well, I'll be excited because I started this and just read the very first poem, the like prologue. So it'd be good to yeah. like get a little farther in that. So let's do, do you want to just do this, what we've been doing? Just go to zero, zero. Good with me. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess a little over 20 minutes. See you in a little bit. <laughs>
Hello. Did you get some food? I did. In the nick of time, I got back. <laughs> so no reading. No reading done that time. Oh. That's okay. Okay, let's... Oh, we lost someone. Good night. Looks like she had already left. Maybe a little bit ago. How was your sprint? Good. I'm like... I was just reading um, this and I had it like covering the TV and I was like, oh, I should see what time it is. And I was like, it's almost time to be done with the sprint. It's so good. <laughs> I didn't want to stop. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm glad you're liking it. <sighs> yeah, I thought it was really good. Yeah. Bryce thought it went by quick too. It just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a little shorter than our previous ones because we started a little bit later. So, yeah. yes. But that, yeah, I was getting really absorbed in the the book already. Yeah. And I, I feel like her writing style is like a good balance of like, it doesn't just feel like a novel in verse where like she wrote it and then she put things on different lines, but it also isn't like awkward, you know, like I thought she did a good job with it. So... So that means you didn't get any reading done. I did not. <laughs> so that's okay. Because that's I've only, I think I said last time I have like 25 pages left. So I can definitely do that tonight. And that's exciting because that means I have read another book for that project that I've been working yeah. on for an embarrassing, like, it's a series of novellas, Kelly. Like, why is it taking me so long? Why am I like this? But. Oh, <sighs> I am the same. Legacy is done. Good. Um, Getting things accomplished. Yeah. I'm the same way though. If I have a project, sometimes I'm like, I would have finished all these books if I didn't tell myself I should mm -hmm. read them. And suddenly I'm like, no, I'm not going to read those because I've been told I, even by myself, that I should read them. Yeah. It's like, I don't do what anybody says. Even me. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I used up all of my like ability to read what people tell me during school because like you do that so much and I like I always read the group book I did not you know skim or anything I always read it and I guess like now I'm just like done <laughs> it's like, yeah. no nobody controls my reading even I don't control my reading <laughs> yeah I even like want to participate in a book club like I signed up for Bethany's Patreon back like towards the beginning of the year or whatever and I have not participated in one live show. Uh, wait, wait, I did one. I did one on a book that I hadn't read. I think it was um, How Long Till Black Future Month. So it, I didn't, but I had read it like two years prior. So I didn't even able to really participate. But even with How the Word Is Passed, I was like, oh, I should participate in that one because I read it and I forgot. Like, I just am not good at like reading the book and then participating in like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll see. Maybe this next year I will participate because she's doing Clockwork Boys. Is it this month? Right. That's right. I haven't checked it. Checked what one yet. And I just reread that series in so twenty twenty. So I'm ready. Except for the problem is, I don't remember exactly where book one ends, so I just can't talk too much. I think yeah, because it's like they get to the city, I think, and that's it. I th yeah. like because. But it's hard to remember, like, yeah, the scenes that happen, if they happen in book one or book two, but, yeah. Yeah. So, I'll let other people kind of lead, and then I can... <laughs> you can chime in, do. yeah. Chime in on, based on that, but I, I really love that series, and I'm glad I reread that since I had a couple bad T. Kingfisher. Yeah. Well, after, after we were both so disappointed in Sword Heart, like... I, I wasn't necessarily worried that I wouldn't like other stuff by her because I had loved Nettle and Bone and that was one of her mm -hmm. newer ones. But it is just sad when it's like, yeah. this is an author that you can always depend on. And then I'm like, this was not good. <laughs> this was not a fun time. So yeah. a lot of people love it though. Like a lot of, mm -hmm. like the the people I know who like are reading T. King Fisher, a lot of times that's one that they really enjoy. So, like, I'm glad, but I can't relate. <laughs> yeah, no, I just don't get it. Like, 
I did not find it good at all. And then I just I read, think, sorry, go ahead. No, because then I read, um, oh, what was it? The other one that I didn't like. Oh, the, oh, the holiday places. Yeah, I didn't like that one either. And yeah. that was when I read I mean, it right afterward. I'm like, no, two in a row. <laughs> yeah. I also did not care for that one, which was not that big of a surprise to me because, like, I don't read a ton of horror. And I don't think, like, even though I love T. Kingfisher, I don't think I'm going to, like, seek out other horror by her because I just feel like I love her mm -hmm. fantasy. But, yeah, it is a bummer when you have, like, two in a row. And the thing about Sword Heart, too, which, like, we talked about when we read it, is, like, it's so, in some ways, it's so similar to the Clockwork Boys, but Clockwork Boys does it all so much better. Yeah. So I think it's it's frustrating to read Sword Heart if you've already read the other series, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because I would say that maybe I just don't like it when she focuses more on the romance, because that one was more focused on the romance. Because I loved the romance and... Um, clockwork boys but it definitely wouldn't be described yeah. as a romance book like it was just a fantasy yeah. that had a romance in it but you know sword heart is really more like about the romance because they're not much of a plot other other way yeah. <laughs> oh my as god we, so as we much walking. <laughs> not much is um, happening other than their romance yeah. and i didn't like their romance so then i'm like well poo on this we're at least in clockwork boys I, one, I really love both characters and their like yes, slow burn yes. romance. And I just really liked the plot too. It was just a better plot. <laughs> yeah, like more was happening and I liked the supporting characters a lot. Like Sword Heart had that one like priest of, is it the priest of the, the rat? rat. Or, yeah, yeah, white rat. So I really liked them. They were great, but like there just weren't. The, yeah, like you said, there wasn't a lot else happening besides the romance. So if you didn't love that, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because that's like all that's happening. And it, yeah, it's just like. It just and the, the hollow places, I think there were good parts that I liked the beginning and I liked the end, but I think it should have just been a novella. And, mm -hmm. I, and I just don't know why she extended it out when I know she doesn't have a problem writing novellas. Yeah. Like, cause you know, some authors I think just are like, Oh, well I have to write a big book. Cause that's just what you do is you write a 300 yeah. to 400 page book, but she writes novellas all the time. So I'm like, why wouldn't you have made this a novella? It would have been better yeah. than all this like well, filler. And also like, so because I don't read a ton of horror, it's like, I sort of feel like maybe my, some of my criticisms maybe aren't fair for the hollow places. Cause like, I also preferred the beginning and the end. I didn't like the chunk where they're actually like there. And it was like very effective. Like it was creepy. I'm like, how, like, once again, she makes things terrifying that like should not be terrifying. So like it was effective, but I like hated reading it, but I'm also like, it's a horror. You're not supposed to like have a good time in these parts, yeah. but also I still didn't have a good time. Like, I don't know. It's just, but I can have a good time. Cause I loved what moves the dead. And that's yeah. horror. But I think because it was shorter and like really to the point. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe there were just a couple bad ones, but I liked Thornhedge. I look forward to the stuff she's coming out with this year. Um, I still have some ones in her backlist that I think I'm going to like, like The Raven and the Reindeer and The Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. I'm excited about both of those. Yeah, those are those are good. Um, and also like, so the Raven and the Reindeer, I feel like this, this sort of like subplot romance isn't my favorite from her, but unlike Sword Heart, I feel like it at least, it make it makes sense for the story, why it develops the way it does. Like it, it's important for the main character. And I, so even though there are things where I'm like, this should have been developed more, like this should have been explained or set up. I was like, I don't care that much because like, it sort of works for like what the story is and who the character is. Um, but yeah, I, I did really enjoy that one. There's also a lot of like really emotional, beautiful moments about like animals, like humans and animals and like the way that like animals can love people. It was great. So. Oh, well, that'll be exciting. Yeah. 
I'll get to that at some time. It's the problem of my Kindle books. I need mm -hmm. to like just make myself read my Kindle books. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is because I have several on this month's for the short stack readathon that I'm really excited about, but I've been excited about them for a while. I just, I'm not looking at them. So I don't think about them. Yeah. Yep. I feel that, that. I don't acquire many Kindle books. I do occasionally read some like from the library or something, but it is like hard to motivate myself. Mm -hmm. um, it happens more with, um, and you know, like indie books. So that's why I like uh, some mm -hmm. of my teenagers sure, because they can be harder to come across because not her newer ones, but her older ones were all independently published. So sometimes harder to get to. And like, I'll be like, well, I could just buy the Kindle for a few dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I should just buy them all in paperback because I'd rather have that. But then I did that with hollow places and I'm going to get rid of it. So <laughs> <laughs> a dilemma. Yeah. It makes me wonder if I should buy the other backlist horror, the twisted ones, or if I should just get that from the library instead of buying it. Yeah. Have you looked at reviews for it? I think I have. I can't remember if that one had the same reviews as hollow places or not. Because a lot of people did also like Hollow Places. Yeah. It has a 3.8, so it's not like a bad rating. Yeah. Okay, if I can find the. What is it called? The, is it the Twisted Ones? Yes, I think so. Oh, this one has a 3.64. So maybe I won't buy that. <laughs> yeah, it's also, it's hard to say though, because I feel like in general, T. King Fisher can be kind of hit or miss. Um, like I'm actually, I'm a little surprised that she's having such a big moment on booktube. Like I'm thrilled, yeah. but I'm a little surprised because her books are so like specific and kind of odd. <laughs> so yeah, I don't yeah. know if like average rating would be as indicative for her books. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm looking at some of the other ones, and a lot of them are over four, like Clockwork Boys and Wizard's Guide. Okay. Even Sword Heart is like 4.18. Yeah. I, I know. I'm <laughs> glad because that was, that was one of the ones from her that I was like so sure was going to be a favorite. Like, I was like, this setup sounds great. I'm so on board for this. And look what happened. <laughs> I know. I also like I know it was such a minor part of the book but I still get pissed off every time I think about like the way the two of them talked about her first husband mm -hmm. like just oh my god it was so uncomfortable like they were joking about how like he basically was forced to sleep with her when he didn't want to and it was about her hurt feelings like I just no <laughs> yeah I mean, <sighs> it looks like though I was looking through kind of the ratings it looks like her horror gets a lot lower ratings than her fantasy mm. sense. horror in general i feel like gets more mixed gen mixed ratings. right it seems polarizing mm -hmm. yeah. though i feel like i was never a horror reader and i don't know if horror has changed or if like what's popular horror has changed or what but i find the last couple of years that like like the goodreads awards i was like oh I have more of the horror on my TBR or have read than any other category. And I'm just like, what's going on? Or if it's just the type. I don't yeah. Think, like T. Kingfisher is not super scary. I mean, she has like creepy things, but it's not like super scary. Yeah. And in a way it's not like, cause you also read the seventh bride and Brian and roses mm -hmm. and those are not horror, but they have a couple of like, pretty like creepy parts and so I feel like her horror is not that much past what some of her fantasy books are yeah um yeah that is interesting though I've kind of I've sort of been noticing as well that like I am more open to reading some I mean like very few like um I've had really good luck with Sylvia Moreno Garcia's books and then also I did read Lone Women mm -hmm. um 
which that's another one where it's like not scary really like I don't know so yeah I wonder if it is like about what like the definition of the horror genre and how it's yeah. a little looser now than it used to be because I still am like I'm not reading Stephen King <laughs> for various reasons but yeah well and some of that is like I don't I don't know what it, it, it like Stephen King also the ones I've r- read you know especially the older ones they have a lot of other stuff that I'm like weird That's, sexual things yes. weird race things yes and I'm like, but I feel like a lot of the newer horror doesn't have that stuff. Yeah. I, I was going to look up if. Yeah. Like, I've know. never been, like, interested in his books. But I do remember the first time I was hearing somebody give a more, like, in-depth review for it. And I'm like, I could not believe that one scene they were talking about. I was like, you what? He what? <laughs> like, yeah. No. I was- no, no. Uh, I I find it hard to imagine that being like an absolutely necessary part of any book. Like that's just weird to me unless like the book is about that kind of violence, you know, like, I don't know. Strange. Yeah. It's just like weird things thrown in. I'm trying to yeah. think what was on the horror Goodreads this year. Cause I hadn't read it all, but a lot of it was on my TBR. The house of good bones, vampires of El Norte. Cause I really liked, the Hacienda. I, I want to read Vampires of El Norte. That's one I want to get to. And those aren't like gross. They're just kind of have some. They're like, like spooky. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then, the, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, sorry. I was going to say like Vampires of El Norte is one I want to get to because like parts of the setup of the Hacienda interested me, but I'm like, I, I'm not into the like hot priest trope. <laughs> so I'll like wait and see the other stuff that she writes. But like the, the Vampires of El Norte one sounds interesting. Also, I know some people were disappointed in it because there actually wasn't that much of the vampire stuff, which I'm okay with if I know that going in. It's like, <laughs> I kind of just want, it's like, if it's just like a hint of vampire, like a little sprinkling of spooky vampire stuff, I'm okay. But yeah. yeah. When I was a lot of newer horror yeah, directly confronts these like issues. And I agree. I think that's what yes. it's like a metaphor or it, it either is a metaphor or it's like directly saying it. Yeah. I and agree. I like, and I, yeah. Cause I think even like T Kingfisher's horror or even her newer um, fantasy stuff. A lot of that's a metaphor for stuff as well. Like a house of good yeah. bones from what I've heard. I haven't read it, but what I've heard is like the metaphor of like the, you know, the people my age who are dealing with their parents who have become like super strict conservative in their politics, like the Fox news. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Thing going on. Um, and like just not recognizing your parents anymore when they've changed so much to that, like, yeah. For that. So, and that's what I've heard that that like kind of has the view of, but there's, a, yeah, there was a lot of stuff on the horror this year that, really good and it's also where more BIPOC authors are like yeah getting and I, and I think also like in the ones where you know there are some like truly you know scary or like creepy parts I think like having it be in service to a larger story it, it just works mm-hmm. better for me because it, it doesn't feel like shock value yeah like or it's there for no reason what's that like gratuitous it's not like just yeah yeah exactly it's like it's for a purpose so i i think that just works for me a lot better and um oh i have heard good things about that author yeah the the witching yeah i didn't read alexis henderson's second book because it was like vampire related and i just don't really like vampires which is why i wasn't going to read vampires of el norte so then you're like oh there's no vampire <laughs> no vampire or less vampires i can handle that or the vampires are a metaphor for um colonialism i can handle i i, yeah. I like that but just like sexy vampires or like things like that yeah. you know that whole trope is just like no, no. yeah yeah there's like there's some some of these like horror or like thriller horror books where it's like some of the reviews are like it's not even scary it's it's like it is scary because it's about the fear of being a woman in the world (laughs) or like the fear of like eugenics and colonialism and like all this stuff so yeah I definitely I think the 
those kinds of thematic horror it's not that nobody was writing them before but i feel like it is becoming more like mainstream popular like it's something that i think publishers are like pushing more now than they used to so more people are aware of it i think yeah and i can do some of it it's why i kind of like pick authors and i kind of listen to what you know booktubers are reviewing because i can't do the ones when they when they talk that there's a lot of body horror i can't do that yeah not not for me no yeah. like if there's gonna be like that like when if somebody like especially if like bethany's mentioning oh by the way there's a lot of body horror in this book i'm like take that one off the list i can't <laughs> do that remove yeah yeah Agreed. but i can do and i don't really like it to be a lot of gore or anything like that but i can handle like some scary and spooky stuff yeah like i i like the like uneasiness kind of horror um yeah like i know that you didn't care for mexican gothic as much but one of the things that i did really like about it is that i feel like a lot of it was that sort of like tension and the uneasiness and then like there were i mean there were definitely a couple of scenes that were like the actual horror parts um but yeah like i i tend in general to like books where like the creepy stuff is more like building tension and like less of like you said like the gore or the body horror or something yeah. i want yeah. the anticipation of being creeped out i don't want to be like yeah. or you know completely terrified even though i know that's kind of the point yeah and that's why i don't watch horror because i was yeah. gonna watch because i really enjoy reading edgar Allan poe because it's old enough that really they're not scary because back then you know different things were scary and no. it's not scary it's just kind of like tense and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. creepy um but they, the Netflix put out that show that was like, what was it? It was like based, I mean, the title is like, like the fall of House of Usher or whatever, but it's like a combination of a lot of his stories. Oh, Cause yeah. I saw mm -hmm. the preview and I was like, oh, there's the black cat. There's the pit and the pendulum. Like I could see a lot of the stuff from the different stories and I was like, oh, cool. But then I was just like completely grossed out and creeped out by the like preview. I was like, I can't watch that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want some nice, safe Victorian horror. Thank yeah, you. Like, Victorian horror. <laughs> like, yeah. Or no, like, I'm the same. <laughs> I feel like something that's gothic and creepy, but, like, not going to actually, like, keep prevent me from sleeping because I picture gross yeah. stuff happening. Well, and uh, you've read The Yellow Wallpaper, right? So I feel like that is a really good example because it is like genuinely horrifying, but like in a subtle way and in like a, a very thematic way. And so that's something where like, yeah, it's older. It's an older like horror story, but it's not, that doesn't mean it's not effective, you know, yeah. but also it doesn't have those things that I just find very like unpleasant to yeah. like watch or read. So there was yeah. a book I saw recently. Now I don't know if I'll be able to remember it or if I put it in Goodreads because there was one recent that I think is like a, a newer, like middle grade book that I think was drawing from the yellow wallpaper. Yes. Okay. It's the one by Anne Ursu. I'm really excited oh. for that one. Okay. Did I have that one? Let me see what it's called. I, I think I might have even pre-ordered it during one of Barnes & Noble's, like, really good pre-order sales. I think I might have even ordered it. Um, Would I have heard that from you, or did it just happen we both looked it up? I don't know. I don't know if we found it separately or <laughs> or not. Um, oh, not quite a ghost, right? Yes. I don't even think it said... Okay, I don't know where I got this from. But, like, I don't even think it says in here that it's based off of that. But I just saw the cover and I was like, oh, that's totally based off the yellow wallpaper. Yes, right? it has to be. Yeah. Let I mean, me see. Like, I don't know if you can see the cover. Yeah, it's like yellow wallpaper with a creepy lady in it. And I'm like, that is totally got to be based on it. Yes. Yes. Um, I wonder if it was in a different, like, you know how sometimes the different editions have a different description? Mm -hmm. I wonder if it was something like that. Um, yes, Natalie, exactly. Psychological horror rather than gory horror. That's my vibe. I want it to be like psychological yeah. and like tense and like oh, unsettling, <laughs> but not like 
I want to vomit. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this description, it doesn't mention the story. It says, the attic bedroom in their new house is shadowy, creaky, and wrapped in old yellow wallpaper. So that's why I was like, oh, this is totally like... <laughs> yeah. And it says, after moving in, she falls ill and does not get better. Mm-hmm. And she's spending more time alone in the room with the yellow wallpaper. I love it that it's like middle grade based off of the yellow wallpaper. Yeah. And at least going off of the tags and some of the description, I wonder, like, it looks like it might be like, um, kind of talking about the way that like disability or illness is handled. Um, and you know, like it's all in your head or you're not actually sick, like that kind of thing. So I think that looks so good. That comes out this month. Yes. In ten days, so I want to. I want to. I'm going to see if my library already has it to like um, request because sometimes you can put in the request early. I do not think they do. This is the problem with moving because we had a huge library system back in mm -hmm. Ohio, but here it's just the Duluth Library. So it's three libraries. That's all you get. And back there, I was, like, connected to all the Columbus libraries. Mm. So it was so many libraries. So that's one thing I'm sad about. Yeah. But, oh, well, I might have to get it in ebook or buy it. I just don't like to buy hardback middle grade because my kids always yeah. have papers and... I have sort of like resigned myself to it, but I still am cranky about it. Like if, <laughs> like I know that if it's one that I want to read sooner rather than later, and especially if it's an author, I know I already enjoy like Anna Ursu, it's like, fine, I'll buy your hardcover. <laughs> and I get that like, wasn't that a thing with Barnes and Noble? Yes. Like, yeah. And yes. I, get it, I get it, but I just want a paper because one, I just like paperbacks in general, but especially yeah. in middle grade that I'm going to put on my kid's shelf when I'm done with it. I don't yeah. want it to be a hardback with a cover that's going to get wrinkled and thrown out. Yeah. And I just like, I wish that it was more like in the UK where a lot of times there's like a simultaneous release. Yeah. And then it's, that's fine. It's like, then you have options. Cause I know a lot of people like strongly prefer hardcovers, but there's also a lot of us who don't. And it would be nice if we didn't have to like, just wait in uncertainty for two years, hoping a paperback would come out, which I know is also hard on the authors because you like the only way that they get a paperback is if there's enough interest in the hardcover, which is stupid. I know. Cause I'm, at, least <sighs> the, at least the middle grade hardcovers are cheaper, but I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to buy a $30 hardback of an adult book. Like, I know it's wild. Or like, and like nonfiction is even worse. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. No. Especially when it's not my preferred. I guess if it was my preferred, then I would be, like, getting it specifically to look pretty. But, like, these are paperbacks, people. I love paperbacks. Yeah. Because <laughs> <sighs> I can also never keep track of the dust jacket either. Like, I end up stuffing it somewhere while I'm reading the book. And then it ends up getting smushed. And I, I like, never take mine off, usually, of the book. But... I do feel like they get more banged up. Like, I don't understand. Like, a lot of people say, like, oh, but they last so much better than paperbacks. And I'm like, well, okay, like, maybe the actual cover is, like, more durable because it's, like, solid. But, like, I think that having, like, a, a, a few paperbacks next to, next to each other looks so much, like, neater than having hardcovers because, like, it doesn't matter how careful you are. Those covers are going to, like, pull up on the books and they're going to get torn and they're going to get bent. And I hate that. Yeah. It's like, why should I pay more money for something that I don't prefer and that I also think doesn't look as nice? <laughs> like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. And like, I would, if it was like this one where it's the, um, oh my God, the naked hardcover, yes. like these I would buy. Like, I obviously buy them. And I, and if I find books that have the naked hardcover, yeah, sure, I'll pay the extra money. Like, I probably pay, well, actually, no, because this is in pounds. I did not pay that much. Because this is twelve ninety nine pounds, so that's not because it's not that much more expensive than dollars. So, yeah, probably around like sixteen or seventeen. Yeah, maybe? which is which is not 
terrible, but like, yeah, yeah. I'd rather a naked hardcover if I'm going to get a hardcover. Yeah. Or if it's one of those really beautiful ones that has like a design underneath and like, you know, I can, yeah, I can understand it when there's like more of a specialness to it. But also like I've seen a lot of people talking about this, which I agree. It's like the, the priciness of young adult books are pricing out actual young adults trying to read those or like teens or like whatever, you know, juvenile fiction, whatever you want to call it. It's like, yeah, high schoolers are not, a lot of them are not going to be able or willing to drop like 20 bucks on one book. Like that's just mm -hmm. not feasible. Yeah. I mean, I remember like when I was a teenager, cause I didn't have a job. So I was just like using my allowance. Yeah. And I was buying, um, what are they called? The ma mar mass market, even though now I hate mm -hmm. those, but like back then I was like, well, this is the cheap, like, e like the way that I could actually afford to have books. So it's either I was going to the library or, or buying ma mass market paperbacks. But nowadays yeah. you don't do those in like young adult, but back then we didn't have young adult, like really. Yeah. It yeah. was like you had children's and then you were buying like yeah. normal adult fiction. Cause like I was reading definitely like adult books in high school. And there were some, and, like there was yeah. like, some like R.L. Stein and stuff like that, that I was still reading in high school, but not. Yeah. Or like I was reading like the Patricia C. Reedy books, mm -hmm. like the uh, Enchanted Forest books, like those would, could probably be classified as young adult now, but like, yeah, it wasn't like a, a category really that people yeah. talked about. Um, yeah. Back in our day. Like, <laughs> right we were young. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. Yeah, well, I would have. There were some young adult books that I just like wish I had them as a kid. I might have had more, mm -hmm. like as a teenager, more confidence instead of like I wanted to be reading romance, but the only romance that was really available to me was adult romance. And some of that stuff was really, I mean, I remember some of the books I was reading back then was a lot of what was happening in the 80s and 90s publishing, which was like Kidnapper or like, yeah. um, you know, like that's so weird. Like they take, they take this woman by force and then they fall in love it's like no that is so yeah. creepy like but that was happening yeah. a lot in like the harlequin books at that time and then also i would read like um romantic suspense and all of those are like alpha males yeah yeah i actually i remember i've had like several conversations with my mom about this where like she had she had said the same thing because she read a good amount of romance mm -hmm. um i think when she was like in college maybe in high school i don't know but like kind of like a similar age and like she was telling me the same thing she's like looking back I'm just like horrified <laughs> at like some of the things she's like because a lot of and I think it was like you were saying like the 80s and 90s a lot of the romance coming out then like the romantic part is that like yeah he started out and he like kidnapped her or like he like forces himself on her but like we know that she actually likes him so it's okay mm -hmm. like just because he's hot. a lot of that because what He's hot, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, consent. That's how that works. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's really wild that, like, that was so, like, uniformly <laughs> romanticized. And, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, there's still books that come out now that do things like that, unfortunately. But that it was just so standard, you know, that that wasn't even, like, a thing that you would think to, like, notice or, like, yeah. mention. So. And maybe I just didn't know about them, but I was not able to find like any books that was like teenagers in romantic relationships. Like when I was yeah. a teenager, probably because they didn't have like a young adult section. It was like, yeah, probably, there were things well, coming out, but they were mixed in. I don't know. And I even remember, cause like I like many people, <laughs> I had a twilight phase when I was in high school and I like distinctly remember thinking that it was so romantic and that like oh he like wants to like take care of her and he like followed her to make sure she's safe and it's like okay even if the events in the book show that she was in danger the fact that like you are making that point is a weird message to send <laughs> to like yeah. young girls especially like it just yeah it's it's wild that that was so like that kind of like toxic relationship was like <sighs> so popular um 
Yeah. Wild. Yeah, the first, because, like, Twilight was not out when I was in high school. And probably not, maybe late college. Because I remember when I first found out about Twilight was I was at camp. Because I was a camp counselor. And then afterwards, I was, like, working full-time at camp. and I, So I think it was actually when I was working at full-time at camp after I graduated. And the kids had twilight and then i was like what is this book maybe i should read it but i was like 27 before i even read twilight because i read it after all the books had come out but yeah it was definitely like the high schoolers all had it at camp at horse camp and everybody was reading twilight at horse camp yeah yeah (laughs) and it's also it's like i think maybe part of it too is that it's so fun to be into the same thing everyone else is you know and to talk about like i mean i consistently loved reading like when I was younger as well but I feel like Twilight was one of the books that like I'm not not like that not that like kids weren't reading in general because I'm sure a lot of them were and you just didn't talk about it necessarily but I think that the thing about Twilight is that it was such a like sensation that even if somebody wasn't known as a reader you would like talk about it you know so I'm sure that was probably part of it as well that like I don't know the feeling of community from it and it's just like yeah i don't just thinking thinking back to those books i'm like well it's good to see that i have grown as a person <laughs> because oh my gosh but yeah you know there's just some things that have like that like make that big phenomenon like i feel like fourth wing is another one that like Mm. that that last year that the phenomenon of fourth wing that people i it's like one of the books that hardly ever talk about books in my real life like with people like real people and like they'll come they'll i had a friend of mine just talk about fourth wing and she's like have you heard of it and i'm like yes i've heard of it (laughs) i'm i'm familiar um (laughs) And I know that I know that my name is Marines is doing sort of like a deep dive project on like that publishing imprint. And so that's how I heard about like what their sort of idea or their marketing is, which is like the glory days of YA, but make it spicy. And I'm like, I hate this. That is so weird. Like that just I mean, I guess it's better that adults are like reading books about other adults with those tropes rather than like complaining that there's not enough spiciness in YA because like sometimes I see that which is really weird but I'm like what like what a strange vibe (laughs) to set up for your books to be like hey do you want to read do you want to feel like you're reading a book about teenagers but feel a little less creepy about it here you go yeah um yeah yeah. it's so funny because like you know, I know I'm in like a bubble, like being part of booktube and I'm not even like on book talk or I don't even really do Instagram that much anymore. So it, it's just YouTube, but still, I mean, I know when the big sensations come out. And so it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. When, when people that aren't part of like this, like online book community are like, have you heard of this book? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I haven't even read it and I could write you a paper on it. Yes. I like, you know. Well, now I know because I watched Martin's like <laughs> spoiler vlog because I was like, I don't think I'm going to read this book. And if I yeah. do, I don't care. I just want to hear her yeah. tell me everything that happens in the book. <laughs> I DNF'd it with less than one chapter into it. So I was like, I I think I'm okay to, to get spoiled. But yeah, there is something like that is really exciting and fun about like getting to talk to people about books who you don't normally Um I feel like some, like there are like a few authors that have that like magical overlap quality. Like I feel like Frederick Bachman's books are like that where like they're very popular with booktube and like the book community, but also like super popular with just like, you know, everybody who, who like picks up a book. Like, um, so it is cool to like have those sort of like bridge books. Um, yeah. I just usually don't like the one that's like super popular. So um, that's part of why I didn't even pick up fourth wing. I was like, well, if I'm going to pick it up. I should wait for years because if I pick it up right now, I'm going to like 
hate on what everybody else loves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that way because, but it, it is like a lot of the times when I try to jump on the bandwagon, like I try to jump on the back at the beginning of when I started booktube, like the whole Sarah J Ma Moss and I got like mm -hmm. two books in and I was like, no, this is not for me. Yeah. And then I tried Shadow and Bone and I'm like, no. And it was like, it's just like some of those that have just been really popular or um, Victoria Schwab or V Schwab or yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. All these ones that have been like book two phenomenons. And I'm just like, yeah. if it's a big, huge one that like is talked about like everywhere, I probably should not read it. Well, it's because it's like one of those like publishers, they like intentionally market similar things you know like if there's if there's like something that is reasonably popular then they start like those become the like titles that they're really like pushing which like i understand financially but it does make it feel like i guess i just don't like anything um like i feel like that's like when i when i see people saying like oh i didn't like this ya fantasy so i think ya fantasy is dead as like a category it's just over and it's like I like Jordan DeFuego, I think yeah. is a great counterexample to that. Right here. <laughs> so good. And it's like, I think like, I understand the frustration. Cause like, it is hard, especially if you're like, maybe used to getting book recommendations from like, you know, the, the big books that come out. I understand that it's frustrating if you read a lot of them and you don't like them, but like at some point, I think people, I, I would think people would start wondering if like, Oh, Maybe it's that all these books are similar. And so if I don't like 10 of them, I should I should look for other kinds of books. You know, not like yeah. this whole category is dead because I read a bad book. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, there's lots of little pocket subgenres that maybe yeah. try instead. And, yeah. and it is hard to like, I mean, when I was just sort of like getting into like indie fantasy and stuff, not that I'm like an expert on it, but I definitely have a lot more experience with it now and like knowing like authors that I like or like places to get recommendations like it is hard sort of like just knowing where to start with like books that you're not used to getting recommendations for so I don't want to like discount that that is kind of a lot of work to put in but I think what frustrates me is when people act like it's not just that they don't want to put the work in it's like these books don't exist. Nobody yeah. is writing the things that I want to read that are good. It's like, no, they are. <laughs> you just have to try to find them, yeah. especially when they're like marginalized authors and they don't get the kind of attention that they should anyway. You have to like put in extra effort to find them. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to last too much longer. So would you rather do a sprint to finish, to kind of finish off or? Um, It's up to you. I good with whatever i also was planning to just finish my book later tonight so don't feel like you have to do a sprint so i can finish it yeah well um, i'm happy to do like maybe we should just well if we go till the zero zero that's only 17 minutes is that we could short? we could go to 15 which is like half an hour maybe okay hold on i gotta i gotta edit my banner you gotta do another banner i know <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we could do that and then just wrap up real quick. And then that yeah. could be, I could be done by 1130. Sounds good. Yeah, I don't, I know that it's later for you. So yes. <sighs> I'm right. happy to get back to my book. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. I did finish. <laughs> you finished it? Yes. You're yes. Good. So mission accomplished for tonight. <laughs> Yay. Did you, you didn't start anything else? It didn't look like. No, um, I did a couple of like review things, like just notes for later. And I did, I think, pick out what I'm going to read next. I think I might do Earth Divers, which is that graphic novel by Stephen Graham Jones. Oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I read the first issue already because my library had it digitally. So I know that I'm liking it. So it'll also be, I think, good, good to look forward to that. But because I don't think his novels would be for me. Like I read a short story by him that I really didn't like. And I like respect how good he is at what he does. But I'm just not like cut out for it. Yeah, I don't think I could read his stuff either. Yeah. I don't know, maybe someday I'll try it one, but yeah might be too much <laughs> yes yes well i got a good i got 100 pages in wow so like a third okay it reads really fast but really good so yeah. i'm glad you're liking it yeah i'm excited to read the rest of it yeah and i one of the things that i remember appreciating about it is like I don't know. It's weird to say I liked how angry she was, but like, I, I feel like that's such a natural reaction to have and how she was, she was even angry at her friends who came to visit her, even though she knew that she shouldn't be. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. They have to work through that anger and all that stuff. You can't just, yeah. Cause they're all like, you're so, like the doctor being like, you're lucky you get the prosthesis and everything. And she's like, lucky i've lost half my leg yeah let her take the time to work through it and be angry and and especially because of how important dance is to her like that affects something so much so yep <laughs> the only thing right, i'm well, not loving is how she's like her crush on the like i know i know it's I like i i get it because like i think I think that's not unusual. Like, I mean, I know I probably had like a kid's version of a crush, you know, on like adults or something, but like not in like, in a way that I knew it wasn't going to like be anything, you know? And so I get that, but it's also, yeah, very uncomfortable to read as adults, especially because yeah. it's like, no, this is not like, crushing on this old guy. <laughs> this adult man. Yeah. But like realistic, but that doesn't mean I enjoy it. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't want to like necessarily be in her head hearing about it, but yeah, I'm yeah. hoping that'll eventually like, you know, move on. Yeah, that does, that isn't a factor for the whole book. It is just like close to the beginning, I think. Yeah, well, I get it. Like, I think she's kind of like seeing him as kind of her savior to. Right, like there's yeah. other, I think, factors that are affecting it as well. Like, yeah. Yep. But yeah. It's it's good. Ooh, I think I gotta go to bed soon. I was gonna say we need to let you go to bed, but thank you for hosting these, Kelly. Yes, you you can host the next one. I won't be yeah. available next weekend, but we can plan it for after that. Yes, sounds good. Yep. So enjoy your next book. Oh, yes. Thank you. You're welcome, and glad you were here with us. Yes, thank you for hanging out. All right, I'm going to. In the stream. See you guys Bye next everyone. time.